Hello, everyone. I want to thank you for, uh, oh, I better turn my phone off. It just went live and my phone beeped at me. Um, anyway, I want to thank you for joining me at this coin seminar weekend presentation. Uh, we'll give everybody a few minutes to have a chance to, to get in here for it, for sure. Um, and I need to turn my phone off, don't I? <laughs> Let's do that. Um, sorry about that. Um, anyway, tonight's presentation is going to be on interesting facts about commemorative coins, uh, the U.S. classic commemoratives from 1892 to um, 1954. And it's not going to cover most of the basic facts and common things that you'll read just by looking in the Red Book, um, not going over who designed what or, you know, the mintages or things like that. Um, yeah, thanks for the notice on the audio video, Lincoln. That's great. Appreciate that. Um, so yeah, the, the real basic facts about the commemoratives, you'll be able to look up in pretty much your red book, um, or even online, Wikipedia even has a lot of the information. Um, but I've been collecting commemoratives for many years, um, got a lot of books on them that, you know, each source has little different tidbits of information that others may not have. So I'm going over some of the lesser known facts and just, you know, little pieces of trivia about each one of them. But just in case any of you guys wanted to know, I'm going to show off some of the books that I have on commemoratives. Uh, here's one that's called um, United States Commemorative Coinage by uh, Slaybaugh. And this one was done in 1966. It's a real, you know, thin book. You can see not much to it. And it's just got, you know, real basic. It's got all the different commemoratives listed and a little bit about each one of them. Some of them have some photos. Uh, so there's one of the books that I got some of the information from. And if you're ever wondering what the authoritative reference of commemorative coins is, all you got to do is look at the name of the book, authoritative reference on commemorative coins. I guess if you write the book, you can call it the authoritative one. And this one here is by Kevin Flynn. And again, it's got all the commemoratives in here, tons of information in the back of the book. I think it has copies of the authorizing legislation for each one of the commemoratives. Uh, real cool stuff. Uh, I'm going to try to keep up with chat, but I probably won't. So if it's something you really need to mention to me or anything, um, definitely tag me and I'll have a better shot of seeing it. Um, I see that one coin collector's here. Everybody better check him out because he's like real close to getting 1,000 on his channel and maybe you could be number 1,000. That'd be awesome. So everybody should check him out for sure. This next book that I used is called Silver and Gold Commemorative Coins, 1892 to 1954. Actually, it's the Encyclopedia of United States, Silver and Gold Commemorative Coins, 1892 to 1954. And this one is by Switek and Breen. And this is a really good book. I mean, this is this was uh, actually on the front cover, it even says it. Winner of Book of the Year Award, 1981, by the Numismatic Literary Guild. So... It's a classic one. It's been out of print for a long time, so it's a little tougher to find, but it goes over all the different commemoratives, and what's really cool is it goes over a lot of like how they were originally issued and the different types of holders they were issued in. Like you see, the, here's how one of the gold commemoratives was issued. Um, it's just a really cool book. So that's what I recommend if you're interested in classic commemoratives. And there's one more here. It's the big book. It is... Commemorative Coins in the United States, a complete encyclopedia by Q. David Bowers. And, I mean, when you look at this book compared to the first one, it's a big, thick encyclopedia. And it's got, you know, pretty much everything in it. I mean, he used a little bigger print, so maybe he's cheating a little bit to get more pages. But there's a lot of information about commemoratives in here if you're interested in commemoratives. Um, so this is one to look for. And, I mean, I got a lot of, this is just a few of them that I had laying around. I even got a few more books on, in commemor on commemoratives and storage, too, that I used for this presentation. I just didn't have handy. Um, and that's something I've been thinking about doing. I got a lot of books on all different sorts of coins. Maybe I'll start a, a book review series or something. I don't know if that would be of interest to anybody to pull out one of these books, flip through it in a little more detail, and show it off. But it might be kind of fun. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started with the presentation here in just a second. We will have a couple giveaways towards the end here. If you see under the microscope there, I'll move it around a little bit. There you go. It's a Colombian half dollar, 1892. That's the first commemorative half in the series. And then here under the um, regular camera here, it's a 1954S Washington Carver commemorative half. Both of them are in about XF 
XF45, maybe getting close to AU condition, and um, give one of each of those away. So we'll do that towards the end after the presentation. And with that, um, I don't see anybody shouting out any questions or anything to me. I see a lot of cool people in the chat, so I'm glad you all were able to come check this out. Um, we'll go ahead and get started here. Again, as I mentioned, many things have been written about United States classic commemorative coins from 1892 to 1954. Again, a lot of the basic facts, designers, mintages of the events easily found just by and often repeated in all the sources. You can see all that in your red book. Um, this is going to go into a little more uh, lesser known facts on each of the coins that I thought may be of particular interest that you might not see if you just check out one or more of the sources. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoy this. Let me know, and I'll, I will watch this back and read all the comments after this. I try to do that on all my live streams just so I can see what y'all are saying because there's no way I can be reading off my script here and reading the, the chat at the same time too. So anyway, we'll go out there. And just so you know, there's 50 different main designs in the Classic Commemorative Series. There's 144 different coins total when you take all the different dates and mint marks into consideration. But, I mean, you don't have to talk about all the different dates and mint marks when you're just looking at basic facts. So we're going to be talking about each different main design. So there's 50 of them. And number one is this one right here. It's the 1892 and 1893 World's Columbian Exposition Half Dollar. The Columbian Half Dollar was a coin of many different firsts. Uh, the 1892 and 1893 Columbian Half Dollars were the first coins issued in the Classic Commemorative Series, though it can be argued by some that the 1848 California counter-stamped quarter eagles um, th that were made from the first shipment of gold from the new discovery in California were really the first U.S. commemorative coins. Uh, the Colombian half dollar was also the first United States co coin of regular issue that depicted an actual historical person. All the coins before that had depictions of Lady Liberty. Uh, the silver that was used to make many of the Colombian half dollars came from melting of the then uncurrent coins which were pulled from circulation and held back by the treasury. Most of those were half dimes, which had last been minted in 1873. So they took a lot of the half dimes out of circulation, they stockpiled them up, and eventually they melted them down and made the Colombian halves out of them. There were a total of 103 proof Colombian half dollars that were dated 1892. The first 100 coins that were minted were proofs, and coin number 400, coin number 1492, and coin number 1892 were all struck as proofs. The Remington Typewriter Company paid $10,000, which was an enormous sum at the time, for the first Colombian half dollar, and they did so as a pu publicity stunt. In actuality, though, the first coin struck had a minor planchet flaw and was rejected by the mint. So the second coin struck was determined to be flawless, and that was the coin that was sold to Remington Typewriter Company. That 1892 Colombian half dollar, along with a copy of the $10,000 check, are in the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago today. The first 1893 Colombian half dollar, which is also a proof, is with the uh, Chicago Historical Society. Although nearly one million Colombian half dollars were minted in 1892, the Chicago Colombian Exposition did not begin until 1893. The 400th anniversary of Columbus's discovery of America occurred in October 1892, and that would have been the logical choice to start your, you know, celebratory exposition. However, given the harsh winters in Chicago, starting a huge exposition in October would not have been a wise choice, so the celebration did not begin until the following spring in 1893. Next up, we have the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition Isabella Quarter Dollar. The Isabella Quarter is the first and only commemorative quarter in the classic commemorative series. Please note that the 1932 Washington Quarter was initially intended to be a commemorative coin, which celebrated the 200th anniversary of the birth of George Washington, but the coin proved so popular that it ultimately replaced our standing Liberty Quarters. The Isabella Quarter Dollar is the first United States coin to feature the image of an actual woman, Queen Isabella of Spain. Of course, prior coins featured female depictions of liberty, many of which were modeled from real women. The Isabella Quarter Dollar is also the first United States coin to feature the image of a foreign monarch. 
Sales of Isabella Quarter Dollars at the Columbian Exposition in Chicago were very slow given the competition of the Columbian Half Dollars. Both coins were offered for sale to Expo visitors for $1 each, but most people felt that the Colombian half dollar was the better choice given that it had double the silver and double the face value. So approximately 100 Colombian half dollars were sold for every Isabella quarter dollar at the exposition. Next is the 1900 Lafayette silver dollar. The Lafayette dollar is the first commemorative dollar coin and the only classic commemorative silver dollar. Other dollar commemoratives were later minted in gold. Technically, this coin does not bear the year of striking. The date 1900 found on the coin refers to the date that the Lafayette statue featured on the reverse of the coin was to be erected. The entire mintage of Lafayette dollars was struck on a single day, December 14, 1899, which was the exact 100th anniversary of George Washington's death. Accordingly, these coins are technically undated and arguably are, under, are illegal under the Mint Act. There was a Mint Act in the 1870s, I believe, that required coins to have the date that they were struck and no other dates. Um, so this coin technically illegal under that act. General Lafayette is featured on the obverse along with George Washington and on the reverse riding atop a horse. So this coin here is the first instance of a single individual found on both the obverse and the reverse of the same U.S. coin. Also, George Washington's image on this coin is the first time that a U.S. president has been featured on a U.S. coin that has been intended for public distribution. Next up, you have the 1915 San Francisco Panama Pacific International Exposition Half Dollar. Most people just call it the Pan Pack, though. The 1915 Pan Pack Half Dollar is the first commemorative to have the In God We Trust motto. The coin is also the first commemorative which was struck at one of the branch mints, which means any of the U.S. Mint facilities other than the main Philadelphia Mint. Although the general issue coins were struck in San Francisco, many of which were actually struck at the U.S. Mint exhibit on the Expo, Expo Fairgrounds, a small number of trial strikes of the half dollar were made in Philadelphia without an S Mint mark. So if you own one of these Panama Pacific half dollars, you should check to make sure it has that S Mint mark. If it does not have the S Mint mark, you may have hit the jackpot. Next, we have the 1918 Illinois Centennial Half Dollar. The Illinois Centennial Half is more often referred to as the Lincoln Commemorative Half Dollar, even though the coin does not commemorate Lincoln. It's about the 100th anniversary of Illinois statehood. However, the stunning obverse image of Lincoln dominates the coin and helps make it easy for collectors to just refer to the coin as the Lincoln Half Dollar. The obverse image of Lincoln is based on a statue of Abraham Lincoln, which was made by Andrew O'Connor, and that was also unveiled during 1918 in Springfield, Illinois. The Illinois Centennial Half Dollar was so popular that for the first time in the classic commemorative series, the entire authorized mintage was sold to the public and no coins were later returned to the mint for melting. Today, the Illinois Half Dollar remains one of the most popular designs and one of the most demanded coins in the entire series. Do I have all these that one coin collector says? Um, no, these are not my coins I'm showing pictures of. I kind of borrowed these online from a PCGS from their coin facts. Um, I have owned most of these in the past and do have some of them today, but no, these are not all my coins, no. Next up, we got the 1920 Maine Centennial Half Dollar. These coins were intended to be introduced into circulation in the state of Maine as a method of promoting the Maine Centennial Celebration in Portland, Maine. However, the coins were not minted until late summer of 1920, well after the state celebration had been completed, and the coins were ultimately sold to a premium or to collectors for a premium. The Maine Centennial Commission prepared the design for these half dollars for the mint. Various mint sculptors did not like the proposed design and urged the Maine Commission to allow for a change to the design. The commission remained adamant that no changes were wanted, and as you may know, the people of Maine are famous for doing things their own way. Um, there's a small pine tree on the obverse and a pine wreath on the reverse of the Maine Centennial Half Dollar, which is very appropriate as Maine is known as the Pine Tree State, 
And even today, over three quarters of the state is forest. Next up, we got the 1920 and 1921 Pilgrim Tercentenary half dollars. Cyrus E. Dallin was the designer of the Pilgrim half and put his D initial on the lower obverse of the coin. That is often confused as a Denver mint mark by collectors, although all coins were struck at the Philadelphia mint. In fact, some numismatists believe that the D added to, design, to the design was added using a Denver mint mark punch uh, used in preparing coin dies. The Mayflower ship depicted on the reverse of the Pilgrim half has an error in the design. The ship shows a flying jib type of sail which had not been, use in, not been in use in 1620. Instead, the Mayflower had a square water sail. For those of you that are experts in ships, of course. The 1921 dated Pilgrim half dollars were the first instance of many instances to come of a variety being produced with the primary intention of taking advantage of collectors who wanted complete sets. So instead of just selling the one 1920 half dollar, they took some of the mintage and made them 1921s and made collectors buy two coins instead of one. Next up is the 1921 Missouri Centennial half dollar. The Missouri half dollar has 24 stars on the reverse, indicating that Missouri was the 24th state admitted to the Union. Additionally, a small number of Missouri Centennial half dollars have a two star four incused on the obverse. The Missouri half dollar was authorized by Congress after the Alabama Centennial half dollars, although most listings and catalogs list the Missouri coin first. The Missouri half dollar was first sold to the public at the annual Missouri State Fair in Sedalia in August 1921, while the Alabama coin didn't make its first appearance until October of that year. The Missouri half dollar is the only commemorative half dollar, other than the Colombian half dollar, which lacks all three major mottos. It does not have In God We Trust, it does not have E Pluribus Unum, and it does not have Liberty on the coin. The 1921 Alabama Centennial Half is the next up. Uh, the original proposed legislation for the Alabama Half Dollar was to provide for a commemorative quarter. Uh, before passage, though, that late legislation was later amended to change it to a commemorative half dollar. Although the Alabama half dollar is dated 1921, the coin was authorized by Congress in 1920, and the centennial celebration that it celebrates actually took place in 1919. The obverse features the images of the first governor of Alabama, William Wyatt Bibb, and the then current governor, T.E. Kilby. Uh, according to the Red Book and a couple other sources too, this coin is the first instance of the use of a living person's portrait on a U.S. coin. Before this occurrence, it had been tradition not to use such portraits of living people on our coins since the time of George Washington. The portrayal of Kilby on the Alabama half dollar was also done in violation of federal law as there was an act of May 16, 1866, which forbade the portrayal of any living individual on U.S. coins or currency. Young Coin Hunter thinks all commemoratives look so awesome. Well, we're only at number nine in the list, Young Coin Hunter. There's still some to come, and not all of them are awesome. But they're pretty cool, but they're not awesome. Next up's the 1922 Grant Memorial Half Dollar. The original legislation for the Grant Memorial commemorative coins was limited to the production of a commemorative gold dollar. That legislation was later amended to call for the, issu for the issuance of half dollars too. That legislation was passed on February 2nd, 1922. So that was 2-2 of 22 they passed the bill, which provide for two denominations of commemoratives and two varieties of each. So they were having some fun with the number two then. Profits from the sales of Grant Memorial Half Dollars were to be used to erect a community building in Georgetown, Ohio, where Grant spent most of his boyhood, and also to construct a modern highway from Grant's birthplace in Point Pleasant, Ohio, to New Richmond, Ohio, which was approximately five miles in length. In 1989, a collector wrote into the Numismatist magazine that no such community building was ever constructed and no such highway was ever built. 
Uh, the NQ star, which appears on some Grant Memorial half dollars, has no special meaning or significance other, this, other than to satisfy the desire of the commission handling the coins to have two different varieties of the coin for collectors to have to purchase. All right, next up is the 11th coin. It's the 1923 San Francisco Monroe Doctrine Centennial. The Monroe Half Dollar was issued in, in conjunction with a major film exposition held in Los Angeles during 1923 and was sponsored by the motion picture industry. At that time, the motion picture industry had a very poor reputation after several scandals and was looking for pretty much anything it could do to, to improve its public image. The Monroe Doctrine was loosely used as a focal point of the design under the idea that without the Monroe Doctrine, California may have never become part of the United States. It is somewhat odd that Los Angeles appears on the Monroe Doctrine Centennial Half Dollar, since at the time the Monroe Doctrine was declared by President James Monroe in 1823, Los Angeles was nothing more than a small Mexican town of less than a thousand residents. Hi there, Amanda Kittle. I guess my sister's in the house. Everybody say hi to Amanda. Very cool. All right, next up is the 1924 Huguenot Walloon ter Tercentenary Half Dollar. The issuance of the Huguenot Half was controversial at the time and sparked significant protest. This coin was promoted by a religious group, the Federal Council of Churches of Christ in America. This was seen as unfair from other religious groups who, had, who, who didn't have their own commemorative coins and was also seen as an un-American religious propaganda and a violation of the First Amendment by others. The men featured on the obverse of the coin had been, both been dead for several decades prior to the settlement of New Netherland in 1624, which is present-day New York and New Jersey, and are arguably irrelevant to the subject being commemorate, commemorated on the coin. Uh, the Huguenot Half Dollar was also the last engraving that was completed by the famous mint engraver George Morgan, who you might know obviously uh, designed the Morgan Dollar. Next up, we got the 1925 Lexington Concord Sesquicentennial Half Dollars. Uh, the Lexington Concord Half was initially proposed by separate groups, each in the cities of Lexington and in Concord. The groups were ultimately united and each took control of one side of the final design. Concord directing the obverse design with the Minuteman statue and Lexington directing the design of the reverse of the old Belfry Tower in Lexington. Many of the Lexington Concord sesquicentennial half dollars were issued in small wooden boxes with sliding lids. The boxes had ink stampings of the Minuteman statue on the top and the tower in Lexington on the bottom. And those boxes are quite collectible today. Next up is the 1925 Stone Mountain Memorial half dollar. Congress was initially unwilling to authorize a commemorative coin which commemorated the soldiers of the rebellion rebellious uh, South. To ensure the passage of the legislation, the Stone Mountain Half Dollars were also issued in memory of the recently deceased President Warren G. Harding, and a corresponding inscription was included on the original design for the reverse. Ultimately, no mention of President Harding was made on the actual coins, and some sources claimed that, the, that uh, President Coolidge personally objected to Harding's mention on the coin. If true, it's ironic that given Coolidge's appearance on, on the sesquicentennial of American Independence coin the following year. So you'll see that in a little bit. Uh, the 13 stars on the obverse of the Stone Mountain Memorial Half Dollar do not represent the original 13 states of the United States. Instead, those 13 stars represent the 13 seceding southern states. The reverse of the coin features 35 scattered stars in the background, which represents the number of states in the Union at the end of the Civil War. Next is the 1925 San Francisco California Diamond Jubilee. The California Golden Bear, also known as the California Grizzly, which is shown on the reverse of this coin, is the state animal of California and was later featured on the 1936 Oakland Bay Bridge half dollar. This bear has been extinct since 1922, well before the issuance of this half dollar. However, some 
similar subspecies of grizzly bears do remain today. The 1925 Fort Vancouver Centennial is next. The entire mintage of Vancouver half dollars were struck at the San Francisco Mint. However, the S mint mark was inadvertently omitted from the coin. As a publicity stunt, the entire mintage of Fort Vancouver Centennial halves were flown from San Francisco up to Fort Vancouver, Washington. Remember, this was in a time where uh, travel by uh, airplane was uh, sort of a new thing. The reverse design depicts a large mountain in the background. However, there are no such mountains near Vancouver, Washington. Instead, the design probably represents Mount Rainier and the Cascades, which are over 100 miles away. You could go for more videos like this on the tube. Kellen, you're, you're free to watch this over and over and over again when, when it's done. That's awesome. Next is the 1926 Sesquicentennial of American Independence Half. The obverse of this coin depicts the first president of the United States, George Washington, alongside the current president of the United States at the time, Calvin Coolidge. This is the first and only time that a living president had appeared on a U.S. coin. The original legislation for the sesquicentennial half dollars called for a $1.50 gold coin to be the commemorative. That idea, that idea was ultimately rejected and a half dollar was uh, minted instead. The reverse design featuring the Liberty Bell is very similar to that of the Franklin half dollar that most of you are familiar with that was minted from 1948 to 1963. They're familiar, it looks familiar because both designs were designed by the same designer, John R. Sinnock. And uh, just so you guys know, this is a sesquicentennial half dollar. That means the 150th anniversary. Uh, we're closely cl coming up on the 250th anniversary of American Independence. And uh, that, for those of you that don't know, that's going to be called the Semi-Quincentennial. So that's a word to start getting uh, used to, Semi-Quincentennial. This next one, 1926 through 1939 Oregon Trail Memorial. Of the 50 classic commemorative half or of the 50 classic commemorative coins, the Oregon Trail coin is the longest running issue. It is likely that this series would have continued well into the 1940s and maybe even until present day if it were not for the intervention of Congress in 1939 to prevent future issues. The 1926 half dollars were the first commemorative halves struck at two different mint facilities in the same year. Coins were struck both in Philadelphia and in San Francisco. The 1933 Denver Oregon half dollars were the first commemorative struck at the Denver Mint. All right, we're getting on number 19. You love that one. Yeah, the Oregon is the favorite of many. 1927 Vermont sesquicentennial. Unlike many commemorative half dollar issues, the Vermont half dollars were approved by Congress in 1925, two years before the planned celebration at which they were to be distributed. This coin is one of the few classic commemoratives to bear a specific day date. So it actually has a day and a, it says August, I'm trying to read it, I can't read it on the, it's real tiny on the screen, but you can see on the um, left hand side of the reverse that it has August 16th, I believe is the date. So very few coins actually have a specific day. The cat amount on the reverse of the Vermont half dollar has no symbolic or historical significance to the Battle of Bennington or to Vermont independence. Other more relevant designs were rejected in favor of this cat amount design, which was used solely for artistic purposes. So I think it's a pretty cool design. <laughs> Amanda, pay attention to this one. This is the 1928 Hawaiian sesquicentennial. Captain James Cook discovered Hawaii in 1778. The Hawaiian natives killed him the following year on his return visit to Hawaii. A total of 50 proof examples of the Hawaiian half dollar were produced. The proofs were made by sandblasting already struck coins. These sandblasted proofs were distributed to various dignitaries, many of which were in the Hawaiian Islands. Although the Hawaiian half dollar had the highest original issue price of any other commemorative half dollar at that time, 
uh, the charge was two dollars per coin for these at the time this issue was a very quick sellout with most coins being sold in Hawaii next we got the 1934 Maryland tercentenary half dollar the image of Cecil Calvert also known as Lord Baltimore on the obverse of the Maryland half may not be Calvert the image was based on a painting that showed the individual wearing a Puritan collar and Calvert was a known Catholic. The Commission of Fine Arts at the time recommended changing the collar on the coin design, but the collar was maintained just so it could match the painting. So it's a little bit uh, historically inaccurate. Next up's the Texas Independent Centennial. These were minted from 1934 to 1938. The Texas half dollars have one of the most crowded designs of any commemorative half dollar. Because of this very crowded design, there are hardly any open fields remaining in the design, and that makes uh, grading the coins quite difficult. The Texas half dollars were issued for two years before and two years after the actual centennial date of 1936. There was an attempt by the commission responsible for these coins to create five different reverse designs for the coin starting in 1936, but that proposal was rejected by Congress. Sheldon got a chance to see the Hawaii coin. That's great. Good to see you, Sheldon. Next up, we got the Daniel Boone Bicentennial coin, 1934-1938. The Daniel Boone half dollars are very similar in design to the Missouri Centennial half dollars that we showed earlier. Both designs of the Missouri coin and the Daniel Boone coin feature Daniel Boone on the obverse and the standing figures of Boone and an Indian on the reverse. A portion of the 1935 Boone Centennial half dollars do not carry the bicentennial date of 1934, which was added to the reverse design after the striking of the 1935 coins had started. And next up. The 1935 Connecticut Tercentenary Half Dollar. In most cases, the costs of designing and producing classic commemorative half dollars were paid for by various organizations who sponsored the commemoratives. That was not the case of the Connecticut Half Dollar, which was funded by a program through the Works Progress Administration, which was one of President Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal agencies. In 1958, there was a request for the reissuance of Connecticut half dollars, but that request was rejected by the U.S. Mint. The 1935 through 1939 Arkansas Centennial half dollars are next. In 1936, Arkansas attempted to obtain three additional designs for their half dollars, only one of those new reverse dines was authorized, and that's the Arkansas Robinson half dollar, which is the next coin on our list. The 13 stars on the diamond emblem on the reverse of the Arkansas half dollar. Um, some sources think this is symbolic of the original 13 colonies, or the fir thir first uh, 13 states to, to join the Union. Other sources claim that the 13 stars are symbolic of Arkansas being the 13th state to secede from the Union during the Civil War. And with that, we are halfway through. That was coin number 25. Next is coin number 26, which is the Arkansas Centennial coin, but the Robinson variety that they were able to get. So in 1936, as I mentioned, Arkansas obtain, attempted to obtain three new designs for their half dollar, but only one of them was authorized by Congress. When that, now it, and most people refer to this as the Robinson half dollar. It's often collected as a separate type from the standard Arkansas halves. Although the act authorizes this coin, um, it refers to Robinson's side as the reverse. Um, most collectors consider that side the obverse of the coin. So technically where you have uh, Robinson on the one side, that's really the reverse of the coin, but most don't see it that way. Although these coins were minted in January of 1937, the coins are dated 1936 as the act authorizing the coin required. The Arkansas Robinson half dollars are one of the few United States coins to bear the portrait of a then living person. Robinson was a United States Senate Majority Leader during 1936 and voted for the legislation to allow for the design change which ultimately resulted in his portrait being on the coin. 
Um, however, the port using his portrait was against his wishes. He did not want it to be him. But he did vote for the legislation that allowed for the for the design change. Next up, we got the 1935 Hudson, New York sesquicentennial. The Hudson half dollar commemorates the incorporation of the city of Hudson, although that city was settled nearly 125 years before it was formally incorporated. Despite the belief of many casual collectors, this half dollar does not commemorate Henry Hudson. It commemorates the city. Although the Hudson, New York half dollars were initially issued for a dollar each, most of that mintage was quickly bought up by speculators who quickly raised the prices up to $5 or more per coin. One coin dealer alone was believed to have purchased 7,500 of the 10,000 coins that were minted. Next one is the California Pacific International Exposition in San Diego. Many examples of the San Diego half dollar were unsold at the end of 1935. Instead of continuing sales of those coins into the next year, the commission handling sales had a recoinage bill passed by Congress which authorized new coins dated 1936 to be struck. A total of 180,000 of the 1935 San Francisco coins were melted and then recoined into 1936 Denver coins. The California Pacific International Expo in San Diego half dollar is one of the few commemorative half dollars to be coined solely at the branch mints. All of the coins were minted either in San Francisco or Denver. None of the coins were minted in Philadelphia. Yeah, that's crazy. The guy bought 7,500 of the 10,000 coins. It's funny because you see when new coins come out at the mint, collectors complain a lot about how many of them end up going to dealers, but... Nowhere near 75% of the coins go to one single dealer today, but that happened back then. Next coin is the 1935 Old Spanish Trail half dollar. This half dollar commemorates the 400th anniversary of the expedition of Cabeza de Vaca and the opening of this Old Spanish Trail. Since no portrait of Cabeza de Vaca existed, the designer of the coin used a cow's head since the literal translation of his name from Spanish is head of a cow. The explorer was also known to have left cow skulls all along the old Spanish trail to mark the path so his followers would know the route. The old Spanish trail half was designed by a collector, L.W. Hoffaker, who later went on to become president of the American Numismatic Association. Hoffaker was able to convince Congress to authorize the Spanish trail halves and to issue the entire mintage to him to be distributed in a manner and price as he saw fit. Congress later investigated the distribution of old Spanish half dollars um, and Hoffecker maintained that the distribution was fair and that most of the coins ended up in collectors hands. However, over 100 examples of the Spanish trail half dollar were found in Hoffecker's estate and sold in the 1980s. The 1936 Providence, Rhode Island Tercentenary. The Providence, Rhode Island half dollar was a very popular coin at the time of issue. It was widely reported that nearly the entire mintage was sold within six hours on the first day of release. Later evidence revealed that this was a false report and that, no, and that other coins uh, later became available at higher prices. A little bit of fake news being spread there to take advantage of collectors. The matter became a major scandal and is often cited as one of the major abuses of the commemorative coin programs of the 1930s. The 1936 Cleveland Centennial Great Lakes Exposition coin. This coin was minted in February 1937, even though all of the half dollars are dated 1936. That's what the act required and that's what they did. The first 200 Cleveland half dollars were placed in numbered and notarized holders, which are very collectible today. Also, in 1941, 100 mint state examples of the Cleveland half were counterstamped for the 20th anniversary of the Western Reserve Numismatic Club. In 1971, 
Another 15 examples of the half dollar were counterstamped for that coin club's 50th anniversary. Uh, those counterstamped coins, if you can find them in the market, they go for big dollars today. The next coin is the 1936 Wisconsin Territorial Centennial. The Wisconsin Territorial Centennial Half Dollar commemorates the 100th anniversary of the formation of the Wisconsin Territory. Wisconsin did not become a state until 1848. The formation of a territorial government was a rather obscure event to commemorate on a national, nationally distributed coin. Uh, the Wisconsin half dollar is another one of the few commemorative coins which bays a day date. It actually has the date July 4th, 1836 on the coin. The Wisconsin half dollar was not a quick sellout, with coins still being available for sale at the Wisconsin State Historical Society well into the 1950s. Next is the 1936 Cincinnati Music Center coin. With its relatively low mintage, the Cincinnati Music Center half dollars were quickly purchased by collectors, and by the end of 1936, sets that were initially sold by se sold for seven dollars and seventy-five cents each were selling for forty-five to fifty dollars. And remember, that's in 1936. That's a lot of money. The Cincinnati half dollar is one of the coins looked at as one of the big abuses of the commemorative coinage program. The 1886 date on the coin really has no historical significance other than, other than it was a convenient date to use in getting the authorized legislation passed. Nothing musical that was worth commemorating on a national coin occurred in Cincinnati in 1886. It is also arguable that Cincinnati was not much of a music center at any time before or after 1886. Stephen Foster, who appears on the obverse of the coin, was a popular songwriter but his connection to the city of Cincinnati is very weak, as he lived there for only three years of his life. At the time the coin was issued, even within the city of Cincinnati, very few people even knew about the Cincinnati Music Center half dollar. Uh, and in summary, it's widely agreed this coin was struck mostly for pure profit and greed. The 1936 Long Island Turf Centenary uh, this Long Island half dollar, these were not minted until a few months after the celebrations for the anniversary had been completed. Even so, the coins were quite popular and nearly the full authorized mintage was sold. Because of the abuses of prior uh, commemorative programs, for the first time the authorized legislation attempted to control the issuance of half dollars by limiting the coins to only having a 1936 date and to limit the striking of coins only to a single mint. Um, as you've seen with some of the earlier ones, some of the commissions responsible took advantage of the collectors by striking multiple dates and multiple mint marks, and collectors were starting to get upset with so many coins issued in 1936 in particular, so this was the first time Congress actually started to, to limit that. The 1935 York County, Maine Tercentenary uh, the 300th anniversary of the founding of York County, Maine is arguably one of the least significant events that has ever been commemorated on a United States coin. I mean, it's just a county in Maine, their anniversary. Pretty crazy. Um, the commission handling the distribution of the York half dollars attempted to have another 5,000 half dollars issued with a 1937 date, but that request was denied by the Mint. The commission uh, in charge of these half dollars was still selling 1936 dated York half dollars well into the 1950s. Again, really weak half dollar, celebrating a pretty unimportant event, and it was tough to, tough to sell them back at the time. This next one, it's number 36 on our list. It's the 1936 Bridgeport, Connecticut Centennial. The designer adopted the modernistic eagle design from the Connecticut half dollar on this one. Um, also, many collectors believe P.T. Barnum was chosen for the obverse of the coin based on his fame as a showman. But in reality, P.T. Barnum was greatly involved with the early history and planning of the city of Bridgeport and once served as the mayor of Bridgeport, Connecticut. The Bridgeport, Connecticut half dollar commemorates the 100th anniversary of the incorporation of the city of Bridgeport 
although that city was founded nearly 200 years earlier before incorporation was official. So again, it wasn't uh, sort of a weak idea for a half dollar, but all it took at that time was to come up with an idea and get Congress to pass it, and you could get a coin made. Next up is the 1936 Lynchburg, Virginia sesquicentennial. The Lynchburg half dollar is another example of the few United States coins that have a portrait of a then-living person. Carter Glass is on the coin, and he protested against the use of his portrait to no avail. John Lynch, the founder of Lynchburg, was the obvious choice for the obverse of the coin, but they couldn't find any images of Mr. Lynch, so they ended up using Carter Glass. The sesquicentennial of the city charter of Lynchburg, Virginia, again, was hardly an event of statewide importance, let alone an event of national significance worthy of commemoration on a coin. Uh, despite the relative unimportance of this coin, collectors quickly bought them up, and a relatively, uh, it was a real small mintage, so they sold out pretty quick. 1936 Elgin, Illinois Centennial. The dual dates on the Elgin half dollar of 1673 and 1936 do not relate to the 100th anniversary of the city of Elgin, which was first settled in 1835 and incorporated in 1847. But the dates instead refer to the date that French explorers Marquis and Joliet first entered Illinois. Although the authorizing legislation for the coin says otherwise, the Elgin half dollar is more of a commemoration of the early pioneers than it was of the city of Elgin. In fact, the coins were not issued in or around Elgin, Illinois at all, but were instead largely distributed through a dealer in El Paso, Texas. The proceeds of the sale of Elgin half dollars were to be used to erect a pioneer memorial sculpture in the city of Elgin, Illinois. The base of the memorial had been poured as of 1934, a couple years before the issuance of the coin. The designer of the coin was also the artist working on the memorial. Unfortunately, only about $8,000 was raised through the sale of Elgin half dollars, well short of the approximately $100,000 needed to finish that memorial. That pioneer memorial in Elgin, Illinois was not completed until November of 2001 which happened to be 11 years after the artist's death. Look at that. That one coin collector's 19 away from 1,000. Hopefully everybody's helping him out reach that goal. That's awesome. Next up's the 1936 Albany, New York Charter Half. The authorizing legislation for the Albany Half Dollar states that this coin was issued in commemoration of the founding of the city. However, the city of Albany was founded in the year 1614. Albany was chartered as a city in 1686, which, was, which is what the half dollar is really commemorating, the date that the city was chartered, not the date that it was founded. Even today, the Albany half dollar is not very popular amongst collectors, and it was not very popular at the time. These coins remained available for purchase at their original issue price all the way up through the late 1950s. This one here is the 1936 San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge opening half. Again, the California grizzly bear used as the model for the obverse of this coin spent his life in a cage. This fact caused some criticism as collectors felt that a caged bear was not emblematic of liberty and or freedom. The original legislation authorizing this coin uh, said that it was to commemorate the completion of bridges in the San Francisco Bay Area. The Golden Gate Bridge also began construction about the same time as the Bay Bridge in 1933. However, the final legislation only referred to the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge and did not mention the Golden Gate Bridge. A significant number of these San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge half dollars were sold at toll booths near the entrance to the bridge in 1936. Despite selling coins on a drive through basis, Many coins remained unsold and were melted during 1937. The 1936 Columbia, South Carolina sesquicentennial. Of the many commemoratives authorized by Congress in 1936, the Columbia half dollar was the first one authorized, but it was the last one struck that year, and it was struck well after the festivities related to the celebration had taken place. 
There are six sets of the Columbia sesquicentennial half dollar that were sealed in a time capsule that was opened in 1986. These sets were marketed and sold for several thousand dollars each. 1936 Delaware Tercentenary. The Delaware half dollar was authorized by Congress in 1936, struck by the U.S. Mint in 1937, and was issued to commemorate an event that was celebrated in 1938. The date of the coin confused collectors from the very beginning, as there were advertisements selling the 1936 Delaware, the 1937 Delaware, and the 1938 Delaware coins, even though all of those advertisements were selling this very same coin. In 1938, the country of Sweden issued a similar commemorative for the 300th anniversary of the Swedish settlements in Delaware. That coin also has the image of the ship that carried the first Swedish colonist to Delaware in 1638. And at the time, some American coin dealers obtained large quantities of the Swedish coins to promote as a tie-in with the Delaware half dollars. Uh, looks like there was a question here. Might be wrong, but do any coins not say in God we trust? Yeah, a lot of these commemoratives, I mean, most of the coins today have it, but there's been a lot of coins that don't have it. Some of them are the commemoratives here that we're showing, but there's been a few coins that have been missing it. Not all of them have it. All right, this one here is the 1936 Battle of Gettysburg anniversary. The Gettysburg half dollar was authorized by Congress in 1936, struck by the U.S. Mint in 1937, and was for the Blue and Gray reunion that was held in July 1938. Surprisingly, the Gettysburg half dollar was not very popular among collectors, and nearly half of the authorized mintage was later melted down. But today, it's definitely one of the most popular commemorative halves and is uh, one of the more valuable ones today. Getting close to the end, everyone. Hopefully, hopefully you're all still with me. This one here is the 1936 Norfolk, Virginia Bicentennial. The crazy detailed design there. This coin was not authorized by Congress until 1937, and the coins were minted in late 1937. Notwithstanding, the coins bear the anniversary date of 1936, which commemorates the 200th anniversary of the establishment of the city of Norfolk as a borough and the 300th anniversary of the original Norfolk land grant. Moreover, this coin bears five different dates on it. It has the date 1636, 1682, 1736, 1845, and 1936. And what's even more interesting is none of those five dates are the dates the coin was minted which is 1937. <laughs> At the time the Norfolk Bicentennial Half Dollars were issued, there were some public outcry regarding the inclusion of the British Royal Crown in the design. However, the crown shown uh, on the coin is part of the city of Norfolk's historic mace. So there at the top of the mace on the reverse is the British crown, and that's just part of the city of Norfolk's mace. So it was, I guess they overlooked it after that was kind of explained. Next, we got the 1937 Roanoke Island, North Carolina, 350th anniversary coin. The Roanoke half dollar not only commemorates the 350th anniversary of the Roanoke Island colony, but also the 350th anniversary of the birth of Virginia there, the first English child born, born in America. The Roanoke half dollar was one of the few commemoratives which had no maximum authorized mintage in its authorizing legislation. However, by the time the Roanoke half dollars were issue, issued, collectors were already getting burnt out by the many commemorative issues for the commission in charge of the coins to take advantage of an unlimited mintage. So they weren't really able to exploit that unlimited mintage that they had available. Number 46 on our list is the 1937 Battle of Antietam anniversary. The two stars on the left-hand side of the Antietam half dollar represent General George B. McClellan's rank as, major, as, a major, as a major general in the Union Army. The three stars on the right-hand side of the coin represent General Robert E. Lee's rank as General of the Confederate Army. The Antietam half dollar is the only commemorative coin that was authorized in 1937 and actually struck and issued in that same, in, in that same year. 
The Antietam Half Dollar is another one of those few coins to bear a day date. It has September 17, 1862 written on the coin. Next up is the 1938 New Rochelle, New York, 250th anniversary. The New Rochelle Half Dollar was initially sponsored by a local coin club, the Westchester Coin Club of New Rochelle, New York. Congress ultimately required the sales of the coins to be handled through city officials and local banks, though, not the coin club. That said, prior to the melting of the unsold New Rochelle half dollars, Westchester coin club members were permitted to purchase coins at face value, and some of the members of the coin club purchased hundreds of examples each. As was the case with a few other commemoratives of the time, the New Rochelle half dollar was authorized in 1936, struck in 1937, and dated 1938. The 1946 Iowa Centennial Coin. By order of the governor of Iowa, 500 examples of the Iowa half dollar were set aside for the state's 150th anniversary, which happened in 1996, and another 500 examples of the coin were set, asa set aside for the state's bicentennial, which is going to happen in the year 2046. The 500 coins set aside for the 150th anniversary were all placed in the special holders and were sold at $500 each starting in 1992. Since the final 500 Iowa half dollars will not be distributed until the year 2046, the distribution of the coins has technically not yet been completed and is the only commemorative classic half dollar around that still might be available in the future. Next up are the Booker T. Washington Memorial Half Dollars from 1946 through 1951. The Booker T. Washington Memorial Half was the first United States coin to bear the likeness of an African American and was also the first U.S. coin to be designed by an African American, Isaac Scott Hathaway. Despite having 18 different date and mint mark combinations, the Booker T. Washington Half Dollars were not popular enough to sell out the authorized vintage of 5 million coins. Accordingly, the commission in charge of sales lobbied Congress to amend the act to allow for the coinage of Washington Carver half dollars for the balance of the mintage, which is the next coin on our list. The 1951 through 1954 Washington Car Carver commemoratives. added This coin added another 12 different date and mint mark combinations. Um, but even despite that, the Washington Carver halves were also not popular enough to sell out the authorized mintage of the Booker T. Washington legislation. So all together, the Booker T. Washingtons and the Washington Carvers, there's 30 different date and mint mark combinations and going from 1946 to 1954. And with all those, they still weren't able to sell the 5 million coins authorized. Ultimately, a large number of Washington Carver half dollars were sold for face value and many others were simply just placed into circulation. Uh, another fact about this coin is that some eagle-eyed collectors believe that the reverse design of the delineated map of the United States unintentionally omits the state of Delaware. Um, when you look at one of these in hand, it's so small, maybe they just couldn't put it on there, or maybe the, you just can't see the line, though. So I'm not so sure about that one. Anyway, I, that's, that wraps up the 50 commemorative coins. I hope you guys uh, enjoy that. Um, hope that you learned some information about the commemoratives. I mean, there's a lot of other information about the classic commemorative half dollars and, and of course, the quarter and the silver dollar that's part of the series, too. But a lot of that you can get in the red book, the basic stuff, the mint marks, the, the dates, the mintages, values, and all that. But I tried to go through all those books to come up with some, you know, lesser known facts and maybe some stuff, to, some trivia stuff that uh, might be interesting for you. Um, do I have a favorite one of those, Mike? I mean, I like the one that I got under the microscope here right now, the Columbian half dollar, mostly because it's from Chicago, the Columbian Exposition, 1892 and 1893, and it's the first one in the series. So, I mean, it's a real popular one. Um, Joseph World, Michael Kittle, best video ever. Well, I appreciate that. Hopefully you guys like some stuff. I didn't enjoy the fact you missed the beginning. Silver City, dude, fortunately, as soon as I end this stream... YouTube does some magic and some processing and then repost this as a video that we can all watch again later. 
Amanda has a question, Michael. Is that the one I already answered? Um, maybe she can repeat it if it's not. Um, that was pretty cool. That was interesting. I got some information I need to post here that Paula asked me to post. Let me see if I can get that in there. Um, I've been told that um, all of you are able to vote for your favorite coin seminar stream. You get one vote per person of uh, all the different presentations during coin seminar weekend, the one that you think is your favorite. Go ahead and send an email to that coin seminar weekend at gmail.com. The winner would receive a one ounce silver round. I'm not going to tell you that you have to vote for me. No, I would never do that. Def definitely, though, wait until you watch all of them. I mean, if I end up winning, I won't get mad at that. I'd probably use that one ounce round in a future giveaway, knowing me. But, um, but yeah, don't let me convince you. Watch everybody's. Uh, there's been some great presentations so far. Uh, I'd love to see some of the original mint presentation boxes. Yeah, that one book I showed you, the Switek and uh, and Breen book, I believe is the one. It goes into depth on some of the original holders that some of these commemoratives came in, and some of them were pretty cool, definitely. Maybe I'll even do a video on just flipping through that book, like do a book review sometime. Paula says, great job. think the video will get a whole bunch of views because it's a form. Thanks, Joseph. I appreciate that. Favorites, one of each. Yeah, a lot of people put together the whole series, one of each of the commemoratives. It's, it's 50 coins total. And remember, this doesn't include, there's also gold commemoratives that people like to collect. Um, so... Yeah, a lot of people like to put together that 50-coin 50, uh, 50 type set of the commemoratives. Not going to tell you to vote for him, vote for Michael. Thanks, Joseph. I appreciate that. That one coin collector, are you up to 1,000 yet? You should be by the end of this. I mean, we've got a lot of people here that could, that could subscribe to you right now. And hopefully, if you're watching this, you're subscribed to me too because I'm getting close to 1,000 as well. And once I do hit that number, I'm reaching out to a bunch of channels, and we're going to get together and do something pretty amazing. Um, a lot of people here in the chat. Wow, 43 people watching, I see. What are y'all waiting for? Oh, wait, that's right. You're waiting for me to give some stuff away. I almost forgot. I'm just sitting here rambling on. So, again, I got two coins. The first commemorative in the series, the 1892 Colombian half dollar, about an XF45 condition. And the last one, the 1954 San Francisco Washington Carver. This is a low mintage, only 42,000 minted. Another XF or so coin. So we're going to give uh, two different giveaways, 15 to go, Coin Collector. That's awesome. And uh, if you, I think it's getting late enough in this coin seminar. You've been watching coins programs all day long. You probably don't want to do trivia or anything. I'd probably, I think we should do something more of a random thing. So what I'm going to do, if those of you familiar with giveaways I've done on my channel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type one word into the chat. And all you have to do is type that word. So if I type in something, you type in exactly what I type. Doesn't You only get, type it in one time, one per person. And um, it doesn't matter whether it's capital or small letters, but spelling will matter. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and type something in here. And as soon as I type it in, everybody else type it in. And as long as you're one of the first 20 people to type it in, you're going to have a chance to win. So after I see about 20 people type it in, then I'm going to go ahead and say stop. But, the you know, so I figure this is a fair way that um, people have a chance to win, even if they're not the very fastest typer or the first person to go. So this one here, this is going to be for the first one. This one's for the 1892 half dollar, Colombian half. And as soon as you type, see me type a word in, you type it in too. And there I went. I went ahead and posted it. Everybody type that word in, and you'll have a chance to win. And remember, we're going off of my chat, because that's the one I have to go off of. I can't go off anybody else's. So, who wants to win? Oh, look at that, a lot of people. There's at least 20 there, so I'm going to go ahead and type in stop there. So, how do I pick out of all those people that typed in win? Well, I got a 20-sided Dungeons & Dragons dice here that Amazon keeps trying to sell me more stuff of. I'm going to go ahead and roll that. Number 11 popped up as the winner. I'm going to count down the 11th person that typed in that answer is the winner. So I see here, I'm looking at my screen, and like I said, I can only go by my screen. First after me is that one coin collector. Two, Paula Bloom. Three, Silver City. Four, Joseph Whirl. Five, Parker. Six, Bit of Chat. Seven, Lincoln. Eight, Ohio Hobbies. Nine, Koi Coins. 10, Coin and Card Hobbyist. 11, Victoria Roman Carter. So Victoria Roman Carter, as long as she didn't type it again, which it doesn't look like, looks like Victoria wins. So 
I'll just type that in there so everybody knows. Victoria wins. I'll go ahead and paste in the vote for your favorite again. So you have information on that. So Victoria, you just won the 1892 Columbian. Very good. Go ahead. My email address is at the top of the screen. Go ahead and email me your uh, name and uh, mailing address and I'll get that on the way. So congratulations. You thought it was the first 20? Yeah, what I do is I, I hit stop around the first 20 because I only got a 20-sided dice. So if you were the 30th person to guess, you'd have zero chance. But the way this, this works, for those of you that don't understand, if all of you type all that in, you don't know who the winner is until I roll the dice. So anyone in that first 20 has an equal chance to win. So it's I think it's a little more fair than doing random comment pickers. I think it's a little more fair than just saying first person to guess this wins because some people type faster, some people have faster internet connections. This sort of randomizes it and I think makes it a little bit more fair. And if you guys are wondering what this is here, hopefully you guys are paying attention to the coin seminar weekend and there's your little clue that you need to have for the rest of the week. So uh, tried to make it a little bit obvious and I'm making it even more obvious by pointing it out right there. So what we're going to do is there's one more coin to give away. This is the 1954 San Francisco Washington Carver half. Again, it's a low mintage, probably an XF of nice coin. I'm going to go ahead and type another word into the chat. As soon as you see me type that word, you type the word too. Uh, just type it once. That's all it is. If you type it twice, you're going to be ineligible. Um, and uh, looks like everybody's pretty happy with the way we do it. Thought you had to do it in all caps, Boogie says. Now, I mean, I'm not going to require it. I type it in all caps just to make it clear so you can see it. But, I mean, I do make, make sure spelling counts, and I try to do that. But, um, but yeah, I don't care if it's small letters or capital letters. Because I know some people, like, if you're on a phone, it's real hard to type caps sometimes. And I want to try to keep it as fair as possible. The Dice of Sword and the Crown Royal Bag. That's where you kept mine in the 80s. No, I don't have mine like that, Jeff. No. So I'm going to go ahead and type in another word. Let me think of a word here. And as soon as I type it, you go ahead and type it too. Good luck, everybody. So there it is. I posted that word. Go ahead and type it. My chat just went nuts. We got 48 people in here. There goes at least 10, 15, and one per person. Got to have at least 20 people that have said it by now. So I'm going to go ahead and say stop. Thanks for filling up my chat with a bunch of coins. Awesome. And next up, I got to roll a dice here. So let's do that. Almost rolled off the screen, but there it is. It was number 15. Hopefully you can see that under the screen somewhat. So I'm going to count down 15 people. Joe Whirl 1, Hidden Nubespitus 2, Young Coin Hunter 3, Pencil 4, Moose Ox 5, Boogie 6, 7 was 7, the number of magic, 8, Mantic, 9, Bit of Chat, 10, Ohio, 11, Jeff Stanley, 12, Parker, 13, That One Coin Collector, 14, Koi Coins, 15, Christopher W., so as long as Christopher W. didn't guess again, then we should be fine. I don't see it. Looks like Christopher W. So we'll go ahead there. Christopher W., thank you. Again, email me your information. That would be appreciated. And then you'll have uh, just, I'll get that coin out to you. That was for the 1954 S. Washington Carver. Joseph Whirl wants to know what we need to do with that number, the 1838. Is that something we need to include in the email? Now, the email thing that I'm posting, which I'll post one more time, that's just to send the information in on your favorite um, stream during Coin Seminar Weekend. The numbers here, each one of the Coin Seminar presentations either shows off a number somewhere in their stream or maybe in the description of their video. Somewhere they have a number, and those numbers may be used later on, maybe in the big show. I don't know. It might be a little, They might help you later on during Coin Seminar Weekend. So if you... It encourages people to watch all the different events and uh, pay attention. And, uh, and since I'm last on the calendar for today in Coin Seminar Weekend, I guess I don't have to end the stream right away. If any of you guys have any questions about any of the coins or wanted to see them again, I can pull them up, can talk and chat a little bit. I'm fine with that. Um, there are a couple more Coin Seminar presentations tomorrow, so I got the link to the full schedule in the description of this video. So if you go ahead and check that out, and there'll be more tomorrow. And it wraps up, I guess, tomorrow with Ken PV's big show. So you have a chance to win a lot of uh, a lot more. 
Where can I watch more coin seminars? Really, if you just go up to YouTube, the top of the box, the, the search box, and type in coin seminar or coin seminar weekend, you'll see a bunch of different stuff that happened this weekend already, and you'll see stuff from prior coin seminars as well. So there's a lot of stuff there, all different topics. Some of them are more general, basic information for everybody. Some of them are real detailed, crazy stuff that uh, only the experts will need to know. But it's all good information, and a lot of people put in a lot of time to put these together. Victoria, which coin did you win again? It was the Colombian half dollar, the 1892 Colombian half. And then it was Christopher W. won the Washington Carver. We got the OG commemorative. Well, both of them are OG commemoratives. But, oh, thanks, Lincoln. Thanks for saying great job there. I saw you doing some work there out of the corner of my eye as mod and, and uh, that one coin collector as well. I really appreciate your help with that. Um, what else do I got here that I'm missing? Thanks, Bob. Yeah, I really do hope you guys all enjoyed the presentation and learned a couple things. Tell us a brief explanation of how you're going to do your one sub giveaway. Uh, that one coin collector, I can't really do that yet because I don't know for sure it's going to go down the way I want it. The way I want to do it is I want to get together a big group of channels to all work together so that it's not my giveaway, that it'll be more of a community event. That's going to require coin channels doing their own stuff along with me. It's going to require them to put up a few dollars as well towards our top prize. Um, and if we all work together to do that and I can get enough people involved, we're going to have a crazy, crazy giveaway. If I can't do that and nobody wants to do it and it says, oh, you're too crazy, let's not do that, then I'll just do a regular giveaway. I'll give away a Morgan dollar. Maybe maybe I'll get crazy and give away a 10th ounce gold for a thousand, something like that. But my preference would be to get everybody involved and do something crazy that benefits all of us. My idea, I think, would be big enough to where we could each have our own giveaways as part of it, and I have no doubt at least a 1,000 people would enter each of our things and probably give us all crazy numbers of new subscribers. And not only that, it's not just about growing our own channels, but it's about bringing a lot of different parts of the coin community together and uh, bringing a lot of new people into the hobby as well, too. Uh, Amanda Kittle, great video and great mods. Yeah, thanks, Amanda. I'm glad you were able to see it. Uh, hopefully I didn't take away from uh, too much fun in Hawaii there. Uh, thank you, Paula, for that. Yep, I'm glad to be a part of it. Um, TOCC should join. Perfect. Got you down. Yeah, that, I'll, I'll, I'm going to send out an email to a bunch of channels either later tonight or sometime tomorrow. I actually just got a last-minute call. I got to actually be part of a coin show tomorrow. They had an extra table, and they wanted me to... Um, to join in at that coin show so i was planning on doing a lot of this stuff tomorrow but i'll be sitting at a table at a show in van nuys tomorrow most of the day so might not get out until later in the day uh hopefully i'm still able to watch the rest of the coin seminar stuff even from the show uh joseph world i'm definitely sending you an email about it too i'd like I, i'm gonna have channels I'm, I'm gonna be sending out that email channels as low as 100 some subs all the way up to there's a couple people that are over a hundred thousand i'm gonna invite so it's channels of all different sizes a bunch of different interests I just think it would be great if we could all work together and just do something pretty crazy. Um, I mean, you only reach the 1,000 mark one time, so let's go for it, and let's do something really crazy. Uh, it seems like after people reach 1,000, the 1,500 celebrations, not that big of a deal. Even 2,000, 2,500, it just doesn't seem like as big of a deal as reaching that four-digit number. Um, so I'm going to go for it. So you guys will all find out. You're going to pick up some things at the show? I mean, I hope I'll pick up some things at the show. Hopefully I sell a few things and buy a few things. That'd be great. I uh, love. Thanks for coming, Bit of Chat. I mean, appreciate you being here. appreciate all of you guys being here and making this fun. Uh, Mike, at, nope, that's not my email. It's Mike at KittleCoins.com, right at the top. Almost, Lincoln. I'll type it in, too. Uh, if I can type, let's see. Mike at KittleCoins.com. That's my email if anybody needs it. And again, if any of you guys ever need help, like growing your channel or, you know, if you need me to help out, I really don't do quick shout out videos for people because I don't like to bug, bug all the people subscribing to me at least every day with, hey, check out this, check out this, check out this. But what I do like to do instead is if you just send me anything in the mail, send me your channel sticker, send me a little coin or just send me a nice note saying you're a fan of the channel. Anybody that sends me any mail um, I'll take, I'll open that up and do a mail call video. I'll shout out your channel. I'll put a link and I like to help out that way. That's the way I'd like to do it. Do a live walk around at the coin show tomorrow. Mike Badger says, um, I'd like to be able to do things like that. The problem is, is almost every show you go to photography and videos are prohibited. 
not only do some of the dealers get a little paranoid about having being on camera, but a lot of the people there um, don't want to be filmed while, while they got, you know, thousands of dollars of coins out and they're doing transactions. Some of the guys at the show probably aren't even supposed to be there. And if their wife saw them, they'd probably get in trouble. And there's all kinds of things, reasons why shows don't allow photography. So it's tough to do that. Um, that one coin collector is 12 more away from 1,000. That's amazing. Uh, Victoria, congratulations on winning again. Corrected it. Thank you, Lincoln. I appreciate that. Make sure I invite Rob. Yeah, I'll send an email to Rob. Like I said, I don't expect everyone to say yes and be a part of what I'm planning. I know some people just, you know, can't do it or some people won't be willing to do it according to the way, the way I'd kind of see it going. But, I mean, I'll, I'm going to at least reach out to a lot of people and ask. So, we'll see. Appreciate you doing this, Young Coin. Yeah, Young Coin Hunter, I appreciate you being part of it and hanging out and doing it. Um, Parker needs help getting supporters. Parker, if you want to, like I said, my... My address is in the description of all my videos. If you just sent me a letter saying, hey, Mike, I'm a big fan, love your channel, I mean, and, you know, thank you for your support of my channel too, I'd open that up, read it, and I'd put your link and try to get some of my people to check you out too. And then those of you that are in chat right now should definitely check out Parker's channel. He does a lot of good, not only um, a lot of good coin information, but he definitely supports a lot of other channels in the hobby too, so it's great. Lincoln's 22 away from 2K. Look at that. Nice. I don't know. 2K sounds amazing and impressive, but it seems like that 1K is just like so much. Uh, it seems like a bigger mountain to cross there. I don't know, but I don't know. I guess I'll know when I finally get to 2K someday in the future. <laughs> Thanks again, Confrontational Nonconformist. For those of you that have always butchered that name, I believe that's how you pronounce it. So appreciate the kind words there. Um Parker's 480 away. Hey, it, it'll happen. It'll happen. Thanks again, Paula, and we'll see you uh, again. The schedule for the coin seminar weekend is in the um, description below. Um, it's the link to Ken's website, so it has the rest of the programs. There's a couple more tomorrow, so definitely check those out. And if you're not already subscribed to those channels, and, and it also has links to the videos that were earlier today for coin seminar in case you've missed them. So the full schedule's there. Might be a couple new channels for you to follow there. That's just awesome. So. Um, look at that. That one coin collector's 10 more. Uh, we should almost keep the stream open to get him those 10 more, but I'm sure most of the people here have already done that if he's got that many more. How many packages do I have from you, Michael? Right now I got three of them sitting here from you, that one coin collector. So what I got is I probably got about 10 or 12 packages sitting here for the next mail call, and I'm probably going to break that into at least two of them because I haven't done a mail call episode in a little while, and um, I know it's something I need to be doing. Um, so I'll probably break that into two. So uh, that one coin collector, you're definitely in the next two mail calls. And I'll probably save that third one for the next one after that. Because I know I already got a couple other packages from some of the other channels, either sticker trades. And that's the thing. I got my two stickers here. If any of you guys ever want to do sticker trades, let me know. And I'm always up for that. I got two different kinds. I got the circle kind and I got the die cut kind. So Victoria, I did get your email. I saw that pop up. So we'll go ahead and get that out to you right away probably early in the week um what else uh christopher w sent email um i'll make sure i got that too um let me try to pull that up just to make sure i got it while i got you here in the stream um i won't pull it up on the screen of course that's not what i meant i just want to make sure i got something yep christopher w i got an email from you so i got emails from both of you that's great joseph whirl i mean he's another guy who just started uh, doing videos on his channel he did a pretty cool video, a couple cool videos this week. Even you should check his out, his stuff out too. He's only, he's just under two hundred subs. So there's a lot of great channels here that you guys should all support. Make a TOCC mega mail call. That one coin collector, I could do that. I could just keep saving up a more, few more packages and maybe make you miss the next couple mail calls. But then maybe my mail call number eight or nine will just be like nine packages all from TOCC. That'd be pretty insane. Everybody would think that you're a stalker or something or that. You're, uh, you're hunting me down or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> now nah, it'll be kind of fun, though. Um, no, I don't want to just do a whole bunch of all just you. I'd, I'd like to have you in every one of them. I think that's kind of funny. Uh, don't have stickers. I'm a loser. No, don't say that, Silver City. Stickers are easy to get. You don't even have to have stickers. That's easy. I, I didn't even know stickers were a thing here on YouTube until I started getting more involved and everybody has stickers and everything and asking me if I have a sticker, so I had some made up and... That's the thing. I mean, I can um, give you guys a link or you can email me if you need help with it. Uh, Sticker Mules, the company I use. And 
they give me a referral link to where if I if you use that link I give you, you can save ten dollars on your first order, and then I think it gives me a little bit of credit too. So if any of you are thinking of ordering stickers sometime, then uh, let me know, and I can at least give you that link, and we can each save a little bit. And every now and then they run promotions too, where you can get like ten stickers for a dollar. Or they did one recently; it was like I think it was fifty stickers for nineteen dollars. So they run some good deals every now and then. So show some beautiful Indian head veins. Um, I really don't have any here at the moment that I can show uh, offhand. I mean, I'll show this one that I just got in the mail the other day. If anybody wants to show, if you want me to show something, got a three leg buffalo in the mail uh, Friday, yesterday. This one's AU details cleaned, but it's still a nice coin. I mean, it's maybe just very lightly cleaned on the reverse, but I took this in trade from another collector on some stuff. So that's kind of fun. Um, 13 year old creeper. Yeah, no, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want anybody thinking that that one coin collector, you definitely support not only, uh, me and my channel and, um, you definitely do a lot to support others too. Uh, Got a few more stuff coming from me. All right, I'll check that out. Very cool. Oh, it looks like I even got a few new subscribers just doing this show. I'm, I don't. I think t uh, that one coin collector passed me up though, and I think he's going to be the first one to hit a thousand between the two of us. So congratulations to him. That's for sure. Joseph World's going to hit me up. Yeah, like I said, I'm going to try to get emails out to everybody sometime tomorrow. Um, at least a first i mean i'm not sending to everyone that i think is going to be a part of it basically it's going to be saying here's my idea i'm just reaching out to you know a few people first to see if it's even going to work and then uh, i'm also asking like if you guys know of any other channels that i definitely should ask too that maybe you can help me uh find a couple more channels because basically my idea to get it to to pull it off the right way and to get it to where none of us are spending tons and tons of money to do it I think we're going to have to have somewhere around 30 to 35 channels involved. So that's just gives you a little bit of a clue on that we're uh, going, we're going to go big on this and it's going to be fun. And it's not going to be my giveaway event, not going to be my event. It's going to be a community thing. And at all times I'll be stressing that this isn't all about me. This is about everybody. Yeah, the final live stream where we pick the big winners of the big coins maybe will be done by me. But that's just, uh, everybody's going to be involved and everybody's going to have a lot of fun with it, I think, as long as long as it works i don't know i just might be getting a little too crazy and everybody's gonna everybody might email me back and tell me i'm crazy i don't know <laughs> all right what else do we got here anybody else have any other questions or i mean i'll keep hanging out here as long as you guys want like i said i mean you got a lot of people here in chat and i need all the watch time i can get so i don't mind this stream i'll leave this thing on all night while you look at the coins here on the screen if you guys want to and keep giving me tons of watch time that's fun but um no i like talking to you guys you have a three-legger in pcgs 63 that's a great coin silver coin hunter um and i think they take a huge jump in price once you get in the mint state and then even a bigger jump like going from 63 to 64 so ms 63 is a great grade for that coin and it's one of those you know key date coins that's popular always um so that's a great coin to have Thanks again, Lincoln, for posting the email. I'm surprised when people have to keep asking about the email. I mean, it's right there at the top of the screen. I don't know. Maybe I need to, to need to change that and make it a little different or more bold. I don't know. Or maybe it's hard to see on certain screens or certain phones. Don't know. Uh, let's see. Should live, do I have a York? Um, I don't have a York right now. I've had them in the past, but um, don't have it. Yeah, you find it funny they had their own one. Made. Yeah, York County, Maine. I mean, think about it. There's... How many thousand counties in the United States amongst all the different states? And they had one made for their county. I mean, so something uh, something that doesn't happen for every county. So it's kind of cool to have that for sure. Leave it on all night and keep my phone to watch time. Yeah, yeah, that one coin collector. I won't say that I've never, uh, before I left the house, turned on my TV YouTube uh, app and played my seven-hour live stream about opening up wheat cents. I've... I've done that a few times to give myself a few extra hours. I won't. I won't say I didn't do that. <laughs> uh, thanks again, Paula. You said good night. If you're still here, thanks again for all your help putting this together. Um, let's see. You know you're crazy. Don't need confirmation. Nah, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> um, let's see. What else do we got here? Hard to see on iPhone. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I got that. And I've also been told too on the that I need to switch around. 
where I have the microscope, like I have the microscope like up here where my hand's at in the top left corner of the screen. And I guess for some people when you're on the phone, that's always covered up by the chat, I guess. So they, people have asked me to maybe move it over to the other side of the screen. Um, I guess if that's a that's um, a problem, maybe we can switch that around if it makes it easier for people too. Um, put the info so it's easy to copy paste. Uh, leave your playlist on repeat 24 seven. That's pretty good, that one quick collector. Yeah, you could have it done on TV. You could have it done on a couple phones. You could do it all over the place. Jacob Gonzalez, love the stickers. Cool, appreciate that. Um, somebody wants to see some more coins I saw there too. Somebody Was that Lincoln wanting to see some more coins? I don't really have too many more coins just sitting around. Like I said, I have some getting ready for that show and a lot of others. A lot of the real best stuff gets locked up in the safe deposit box, so I don't always have that handy. Um, I mean, I'll show these because these are kind of fun too while you guys are here and have some attention. This here, it's um, just a silver eagle, but it's in a special ANAX holder. It says NASC Golden State Coin Show, August 23rd through the 25th. So what these are, it's a coin show that I'm part of and I've helped run. It's for the Numismatic Association of Southern California. It's a nonprofit coin club I'm part of. And our show is in Arcadia, California, right by Santa Anita Racetrack next weekend. And um, so at the show... We're giving away one of these every hour to people at the show. So everybody that comes to the show gets a raffle ticket. And then every hour we call one of those numbers and they win a free Silver Eagle in one of these special holders we had made up. And on the back they say sample, not for resale. So people that collect sample slabs, which is kind of a big thing like that. And Anax, the coin grading company, is going to be at our show. So as part of the deal of them getting a table and being at our show and doing all the advertising for us, they made these uh, holders for us too and they were real I mean they only cost a few dollars each for us to get done and then on Sunday at the show we have a gold coin raffle where we're giving out 25 gold coins at the show and this is one of them and they're all in these holders too so that'll be fun and the top prize at the show is a $20 St. Gaudens gold piece graded uh, NGC MS65 so that'll be really cool uh, let me see. I, uh, I just missed a bunch of stuff. Nice coins in your coins for sale. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, I got a lot of stuff up on my website if anybody's interested in buying stuff. That's cool. If you go full screen on chat, it'll block it. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I'm probably missing a lot of stuff in here. Joseph World says Iowa has 99 counties just to ruin his OCD. Yeah, I think Illinois had like 102 or 103 or something weird like that. Um, cause I grew up in Illinois, so I remember that, uh, yeah, I'll go, like I said, I'm missing all the stuff I'm missing. I will watch this back later. I'll see a lot of the stuff comments. And so don't get mad or feel, feel like I'm ignoring you. If I miss something, I'll, I will see it later and I'll try to, if it's something you're asking me, I'll try to respond if I can, or if I'll, you know, get in touch with you, you know, in the future there, Jake, Jacob Gonzalez is looking, uh, stickers, love the stickers. And then Victoria says, did you get enough to buy the stickers and discount code? Yeah, if anybody needs help and wants to um, buy buy stickers and get, use Sticker Mule to get it, like I said, if I send you a link to use, it'll give you $10 off your first order. I know that. So I can get you a link to that if you email me. I don't know if that's the best coupon around. I know just if you go to their website anyway, they have a thing where... If you just want to try them out, because like if you don't want to order like a hundred of them, because you're not sure how they come out, you can order ten of pretty much any type of sticker, any size, and they charge you nine dollars plus maybe a little tax. So and the shipping's included. And when you order the ten stickers from them, the I ordered ten of the circle ones here, and they actually sent me sixteen. And then I ordered ten of these here, the die cut, and they sent me fifteen. So they'll send you more than ten for nine dollars, and it's just a good way to try out the company and. Um, without spending you know a huge amount and ordering a bunch and then once you get them and like them you just go right to your order history and click reorder and you don't even have to re-upload stuff so you know you're going to get the exact same thing that you've already seen and liked so yeah if anybody needs help with a link to that company or to try to save that ten dollars like I said I mean I might get a few dollars as a referral back from that but that's not why I would do it I'd do it just basically to save you the money because I've already ordered a bunch of stickers so I probably won't be ordering from them again in a while because I ordered I ordered a thousand of them, so that's how crazy I got. So I have enough. All right, you're interested in joining the ANA, and we'll send a message later. That's cool. I mean, 
I know if, if there's anyone under 18 in here right now that wants to join the ANA, I can get you a membership. First year membership would be the online membership uh, for only five bucks. The normal price is 14 for a young numismatist. Uh, the normal price for a regular adult ANA member for the digital membership, I think, is $28 right now. Um, go ahead and send me your information if you do need help getting a membership for that, too. I can't promise what kind of discount I can get on that, but I'm reaching out to um, someone to try to find out. I think we can save a little bit off of that because uh, basically one of the guys in my local coin club is a former ANA president. So we have some contacts and some people that donated money to help people get ANA membership so we can use some of that donation money that's in there to help you guys out. But mostly it's for uh, young, you know, 17 and under, but I know there's a lot of adults that have reached out too, so I did ask if there's anything I can do to help first-time ANA members or people that haven't been members in many years because um, I'd like to, you know, we'd like to get more members if possible. So maybe there's a way we can do that. Can't promise that. Parker, hope I have an awesome time. I appreciate that. Where is the show? The show tomorrow is in Van Nuys, California at the Van Nuys Masonic Lodge on Sherman Way. They have a lot of coin shows there. There's probably five or six coin shows there a year, like once every two months or so there's a coin show. Parker's in Illinois too. Yep, I told you I grew up in the Joliet area. Lived there a lot of, long time. Interested in joining. I think I read those. TOCC's already an ANA member. Very good. Uh, TOCC, do you take advantage of your ANA membership? Like, do you send in your report card with all your A's to get free coins? Or do you participate in the, the youth auctions where you can earn money all year to win free coins and stuff like that? I mean, hopefully you're taking advantage of it. Uh, let's see who else is in here talking. What are the benefits of joining the ANA? Um, for younger members, um, well, let's start just for everybody joining the ANA. And, they, and ANA is on YouTube, too, and they have their own videos about this, I'm sure. Parker, ANA is the American Numismatic Association. It's basically our national coin club. It was founded by Congress back in the 1880s, I believe. And so it's basically our national coin organization. So if you love coins and you want to help the hobby grow all across the country, you should probably be a part of the ANA because they're it's basically our national coin club. They put out a magazine every month, the Numismatist Magazine. It's a great magazine. So as an ANA member, most of you will get it just emailed to you as a, as a digital file that you can look at. Um, if you pay a little extra and get the print copy, you can get it mailed to you, and it's a great magazine. So just that alone is a great benefit. Not only that, once you're a member, you can log on to their website and access all of the back issues of the ANA magazine all the way back to the 1880s. So if you want to read a copy of the ANA magazine, the numismatist from the month you were born, they have it up there. Unless you were born before the 1880s, which I don't think is anybody in this chat. Um, but And not only that, they're searchable too. So if you were ever doing research for a video or another project about, you know, some, some really obscure topic or some coin collector or some collection, you type it in there and it'll tell you all the issues that it's popped up. So that's great. The ANA also has a really big library of just all books on coins. Some of the books have been out of print for many years. Real expensive books that would cost 500 bucks or 700 bucks or even $1,000 if you had to buy one. Um, but if you call up the ANA library, you can check them out for free. If you're an ANA member, you get, you, and what they do is they mail you the book and then you mail it back to them when you're done. And then you just got to pay the shipping each way and it's media mail. So to get a few books mailed to you and then to mail back, it might be 15 or 20 bucks. So it's a great place to get a lot of books on coins. And that's part of your membership. Um, a and A membership. I mean, there's other benefits of it too that I'm not even thinking of. For younger collectors, there's all kinds of quizzes and trivia things on the website you can do and print out certificates. Um, they'll mail you a coin on your birthday if you're a young collector. Uh, they have a youth auction a few times, at least once a year, where all during the year, you earn, they call YN dollars, young numismatist dollars, and there's different ways. Like if you check out books at the library, they'll give you, they'll send you like 10 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever they give you for that. So all during the year, there's ways you can earn money. And then when they have their auction, and I think they do their auction either through their website in a video live, or it might even be through YouTube live. And depending on how many YN dollars you have, you can bid on coins. So, and then they also do a summer seminar. Basically it's like coin camp in the summer where you can go there for a week or two and take all kinds of classes on coins and taught by experts from all over the country. And if you're paying for it, it costs a couple thousand dollars to do it. 
but there's so many young uh, numismatist scholarships available that at least like 20 or 30 kids get to go there each year for free and it's all paid for room and board and if you so if you're ever interested in that and you're a young numismatist it's something you should definitely apply for um, okay, I know that might have been a long answer, but if you ever, if any of you need help getting into the American Numismatic Association, especially if you're a, under 17, and mostly if you haven't been a member uh, recently at least, uh, send me an email and I can try to help. All right, now I've got to scroll up and see some of the other stuff I missed. That was stacking so with D that asked that. Um, Talk, how'd you go from 500 to like 1,000 in four days? Well, he did a box battle with Rob Finds Treasure, who has like 37,000 subscriptions, uh, box bot battle search in Lincoln sense. And, uh, a lot of Rob's, uh, people came over and subbed, uh, that one coin collector for his giveaway event. So did a little bit of uh, marketing of himself and got a bigger channel to help him out. So good for him. And definitely congratulations on that. You didn't know about the youth auctions. Don't know how to enter them. Yeah. I mean, there's a whole young numismatist section on the ANA website. The ANA website is money.org, just the word money.org. So if you're interested in checking that out, they got all kinds of cool stuff on there. They got lists of all kinds of different, all the coin clubs that are part of them in the country. So if you're looking for a local coin club, you can maybe find information on that there too. Um, yeah, again, I mean, I hope you guys all enjoyed the presentation on uh, commemoratives. I think I might break those down into a few videos like I think because that was 50 coins we talked about. I was thinking about maybe breaking them down into like short videos of about 10 coins each. So the videos would maybe be five to 10 minutes long each and might be a little more manageable for people to just watch because I know me sitting there rambling, talking for an hour long is probably a little too much for uh, everyone. But um, but no, I hope everybody did enjoy that. And like I said, if you guys have any had any questions or if you want to see any of the specific coins again, I could pull them up right now while we're talking. I don't mind doing that. Um, let's see. Heading to D.C., someone says. Eight more for talk, it looks like. That's awesome. That's awesome. Almost to 1,000. You should have 1,000 by the end of the night. Looks like very, very cool. A&A is truly enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, now I know a lot of people have had problems with the A&A. Like they've had different things or they've. You know, it's just a nonprofit group run by, you know, people. And sometimes it's run by a bunch of dealers. Sometimes it's run by a bunch of collectors. But usually it's a good mix. And certain thing, t things they've done in the past have upset one group or the other. So there's a lot of collectors now to say, oh, I don't want anything to do with A&A &A because of this or because of that. But you know what? No matter what they've done, it's, it, it, it's our national coin organization. It's the one we have. If you don't like the way what they've done in the past or what they're doing now, um, then you should do something to try to change that. Walking away from it totally and not supporting it is not a good option in my opinion. I mean, it's the one we got. If you like this hobby, they do enough good just by keeping that magazine going. They have a museum in Colorado Springs where they have tons of coins on display for people. Just a library. There, there's so much good that the organization does long term and will keep doing in the future that I think if, if we love coins or if you care about the hobby, uh, we should all be supporting it. Your A and A number, there you go. He's a member right there. Um, you got fifty six points. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm not a young collector, so I don't know what that means. That one coin collector. So, I mean, that might be for their message board because they do have like a blog. So you can do coin blogs on their website, and if when you make posts on their message boards, I think you can earn different points. So I think that might be what you're talking about. Uh, that one coin collector. But as far as earning dollars for their. Uh, uh, for their auctions. I, I, I'm not a young collector, so I don't know exactly how that is. Please explain the true meaning of the coin seminar to the younger people. Um, I guess I don't know exactly what the, I mean, basically what it is, is there's a bunch of channels that get together on a weekend and um, each do a, t a presentation on a different topic. I think in the past, some of the coin seminar weekends, there's been themes, like where everybody talks about certain, you know, subjects that are related. But um, this time, I guess there wasn't a theme, so they said talk about whatever you feel like. So I chose the commemorative halves, and that's what I did this presentation on. So they get different channels to do presentations lasting from half hour to an hour long, and uh, and they get and the whole goal is too is to educate a lot of the people in the community about different things, and also you know if everybody from the first show goes on to the second show, maybe people didn't know that person doing the second show, so that person gets some new friends and. 
and it just helps out all the channels that are involved and gets a lot of people and you know a lot of people some exposure to some different channels and it's kind of fun um but yeah there's some more uh there's a couple more presentations going on tomorrow. Like I said, the link to the full schedule for the Coin Seminar Weekend is in the description to the video. Uh, if you click on that, you'll see the stuff that you've already missed earlier today, but you can still click on those and watch those programs. And remember, each one of the videos, either in the video there's a secret code like this, um, or it's in the description to the video. And some of them are kind of tough to find. Some of them make it real easy, like me. I'm saying, yep, that's the code, pay attention. Um, but I think all those codes are going to be used later on in Coin Seminar Weekend. I think they're used during Ken Peavy's big show to kind of help out people that have watched all the different programs and give them hints and a better chance to win the big prize there. I believe that's how it works. And remember, one more time, I'll post it. I, they said that um, you guys are all able to vote for your favorite stream during Coin Seminar. You get one vote. You can email that into that Coin Seminar Weekend at Gmail. And the winner will receive a one ounce silver round. So just as a hypothetical, I'm not telling you to do this, but if you thought mine was the best, you would then send that email saying Michael Kittle was the best, and then I would win a silver round. Again, that's just a hypothetical. I'm not telling you to do that way. But um, but yeah. Let's see what I just missed there. Young or hidden to misfitist. There's that. How do you sign up? Parker, like if you want help signing up for the A and A. If you send me an email to my email address, it's mike at kittledcoins.com, just send me your name, address, and basically date of birth. It's the same stuff that's on the application. I can get that information um, to the people, and uh, instead of paying the $14 charge a year, um, it'd be a $5 for the first year. I can get you a membership. So it's that easy. Uh, thanks a lot, Moose Socks, for coming in. I saw you probably already left, so I might have missed you there. Uh, how do you stream on YouTube, Pencil Comics? Says, um, really, I mean, I just got a webcam plugged in and ran through some software, Streamlabs OBS, and there's a lot of videos on how to do it. Other people do it through their uh, through their phones. There's a lot of ways to do it. There's a lot of videos on how to do it, too. Your votes didn't get counted, Lincoln? Well, hey, just send in a couple more votes. We'll send in two or three votes. Maybe one of them will get counted. <laughs> Hidden Numismatist wants to know, who is Ken Peavy? Ken Peavy, he runs his own channel. It's spelled just the way you typed it in there, so you can search that. He, if you also click on that link for Coin Seminar Weekend, you'll find his information there. He does a lot of live streaming mostly. Um, the one he's most popular for is every Sunday, well, almost every Sunday, at I believe it's 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. He has what's called the Big Show, where coin channels from all over donate stuff to him or donate money, and he puts together one big package of coins Valued anywhere from $100, maybe up to two, $300 sometimes, depending on how much is donated. And he gives it away all to one person at the end of the show. So it's pretty popular. A lot of people like to try to win a big package of coins. So it's usually an hour or two long show where it's just him adding coin after coin after coin to a big package. And at the end, sometimes he gives it away just randomly. Sometimes it's a trivia question. Sometimes it's some weird thing that Ken pulls out that nobody even understands, but somehow somebody wins. So it's all Ken's rules. Ken does it, it's, but a lot of people have fun with it, especially the person that ends up winning. And I did win it one time, and I got a big bag with, you know, a hundred some dollars worth of coins in it. So it's fun. So, yeah, if you're not familiar with that, I mean, it's probably worth at least checking that out to see if you like that. And who knows? Maybe you'll be a lucky winner. But yeah, he usually gets somewhere around a hundred people watching at a time. So even if it's just totally random, you got at least about a 1 in 90, 1 in 100 chance of getting it. Uh, Mike's is the best. Go vote. Yep. I mean, I'm not going to tell you. I, I, I mean, I'm going to try to remain neutral there because there's still a couple left to go. So, I mean, you can, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to vote, but I appreciate the nice comments, Joseph. Let's see. Email. Got to look them up. Can't stream. No, I mean, I think Pencil, there's certain things like if you stream right through YouTube on your phone you might have to have a thousand or more subscribers but if you go through like another software like Streamlabs is the one most people use then anybody can do streaming I mean you'll see people streaming doing streams that only have a hundred subscribers so like I said you just do a little searching around on some videos it's not real easy there's gonna be a lot of trial and error involved but if you're if it's something you want to do you'll be able to get it okay sounds like he knows some stuff Ken Peavy let's see 
Tell us about that 1892 Columbia coin I want so you know what it is. Well, Victoria, if you have a red book, just flip back to the commemorative coins. And it's the first one listed under silver commemoratives. It's the 1892 Columbian half dollar. It was issued as part of the World's Columbian Exposition, which was the World's Fair held in Chicago uh, in 1893. And like I said in the presentation, if you and you'll, you can watch it back. They made these coins out of basically melting down a lot of old half dimes that were being stored by the mint. And it's got, you know, Columbus on one side. It's got the Santa Maria on the other. 1492-1892 for the 400th anniversary of Columbus. And it's the one of the first... Uh, it's the first silver commemorative. It's great. So that's what you got. But yeah, all the I mean, basic information on all the commemoratives is in your red book. And if any of you need help getting a red book, if you're under 18, just send me an email. Tell me, hey, I don't have a red book. I need one. I'm under 18. And I'll get you a red book. No problem. I'll get one mailed out to you. If you're over 18 and you need a red book, I'd recommend you go to some place like Hobby Lobby you can get a 40% off coupon online, which will help cut down the cost. So you can get a red book for probably 10 bucks or so. I mean, I think retail price is around 15. Uh, sometimes Amazon has them pretty cheap too. And if you if you got Amazon and they'll ship them to you for free. Uh, if you're really having trouble getting a red book and you can't do any of that stuff, um, let me know. I'll kind of, and if you're over 18, I still might be able to help you get one, but I'm gonna at least make you pay me for the shipping. So I'm gonna make you send me like five bucks to get one shipped to you. Uh, the free ones I got are just for people under 18. Um, six more of that one coin collector. That's crazy. Good luck to you. If you haven't subscribed to uh, that one coin collector, you should do it. YouTube doesn't like the S word being used in chat. Yeah, I've heard that too. So, if, yeah, anytime you're in a live chat, try to avoid using the word subs or subscribers. Or Even though I know sometimes it's hard to not say that. I mean, but um, I guess... The, they some people say YouTube can find that out. So if they see you subscribing, for example, to that one coin collector, and then him subscribing right back to you, um, and then they see they trace that back to the chat, they could wipe out all the subscribers you just got recently. Because um, according to YouTube ter terms of service, it's against the rules to do sub for sub, um, things like that. So, but yeah, try to avoid that word. I mean, it's better just to say, "Hey, I'm friends with you now," or "Hey, I just checked you out," or things like that. But the best thing to do is just have your subscriptions on public in your settings. There's no reason to really hide who you're subscribed to. YouTube's a social network, and we should all be sharing that information. And that means as soon as you subscribe to somebody, they're going to know about it. And even better yet, you should go to one of their recent videos, click like, and leave a nice comment about the video. So not only are they going to get a notification that that one coin collector just subscribed to your channel, but then a few minutes later, are going to get a, get a um, another message saying that one coin collector left a comment on your video, and chances are, if you go do that on other pe people's videos, they'll they'll check you out and subscribe you back even without asking. Um, I get a lot of some of the younger kids and some of the newer channels that have only a hundred or two subscribers asking me how to how do you grow your channel or what the hell, and that's one thing I tell them to do is just go find other channels, subscribe to them, and leave a nice comment on one of their videos and. At least half of them are just going to subscribe you back without even asking, just because that's the way they are and that's the way the community is. Another thing is to go to some of the bigger channels that have maybe 50,000 subscribers or 10,000 subscribers that put out videos about coins and make sure you click the bell and follow them. As soon as they post a cool video, go to it immediately and right away as fast as you can, even before you're done watching the video, try to leave a good comment that's related to the video. Something funny or something interesting or just something really nice and then then like your own comment and hopefully if it's a good enough comment that other people will start liking it when you go back to that video later in the day and there's 500 comments other people have liked your comment and it's top of the list on their video so when the next 20,000 people that watch that video look at it they'll scroll down and they'll scroll down and see your cool comment made by someone like that one coin collector and they'll be like wow that's cool let's check out his channel so you can get followers just by leaving comments on other people's videos that way. It, you won't get tons of them, but hey, everyone helps. Um, see, I can keep rambling on and rambling on. This is easy. Yeah, if, like I said, if you guys had any other questions or want to... Um, the word subscribe is about... Yeah, like I said, David Carl, I, 
I think really all of it's okay. I mean, they're not going to ban certain words. The danger of though is if we keep saying the word subscriber, sub, whatever it is, and everybody's saying it over and over in channel, then there's a chance that this, this whole stream could get flagged as a sub for sub thing, you know, and that's against YouTube rules. And, and that's not what it is. We're just trying. It's, it's perfectly okay on YouTube rules to promote other channels, to share information, to try to become friends with each other. That's all it is. But pure sub for sub situations is totally against the rules. So we, Coins for Amateurs, great advice. That's how we started. Active with other channels. You'll meet great folks. Yeah, thanks a lot for that, Coins for Amateurs. Yeah, they have a really great channel if you haven't checked them out. I mean, most people know their channel, though. But um, I know a lot of people are worried about growing real fast, and there are ways you can get thousands of subscribers pretty quick or hundreds. But you know, by going to some of these grow channels and growing your channel, and but the problem with those is, and you might have even seen it, is you get 20 subs in like five minutes. But by the end of the day, half of those people are going to bail on you and not follow you anyway. And then by su by you subscribing to all those channels, your subscription wall is going to be filled with a whole bunch of content that you're probably not interested in and it's going to be not quite as fun but you don't need to be in a hurry to get up to your goals and it's better to have more quality subscribers uh, following you that actually like coins and are coin related so you'll be one of those channels that has that thousand subscribers and when you do a live stream you got 30 people watching like here and when you post a new video you'll get the 100 views or and all these great likes like like I'm doing right now I know other channels that have a thousand subscribers and they post stuff and they don't even get half those viewers and likes because the subscribers they get might not even know anything about coins or care about coins. So I'd rather have half the number of subscribers and it be people that like my content than just to have that number, you know. So, all right. What else do we have here? You guys are never going to let me go. You guys are just going to keep me rambling, huh? YouTube, yeah, YouTube will take them away at some point. And, and I know some people think that, that too, but... Especially when you're growing fast, and I mean, young coin collector, or not young coin collector, but that one coin collector might have some information on that. Like I said, he's gotten over four, almost 500 subscribers this week just because he did that uh, box battle of Lincoln Sense with Rob Fine's Treasure, and he did a giveaway part of that. And so a lot of people just subscribed to him for his giveaway and that box battle, and hopefully a lot of those people stay with him. But just the way YouTube works, when you get a lot of subs all at once, sometimes all of a sudden 20 of those people will disappear. And but then later you might get a lot of those back. So it's not always that it's just the way that YouTube works. It's just not. I mean, 20 people aren't going to unsub you all at once. It's YouTube playing some games with the numbers, too, at some point. Two away. Holy, holy moly. That's great. Did you get it? That one coin collector? Did you get thousand? Oh, look at that. Congratulations. He got was one thousand. That's awesome. Sheldon's going to email about joining a a That's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, give me information on both. Basically, it's just name, address, and then uh, dates of birth, because I think on your birthdays, well, first of all, they want to confirm you're under 17, or under 18, I guess, to give you the young collector rate. And uh, I think they send you coins on your birthday, too. So that's awesome, that one coin collector. Congratulations on hitting 1,000. That's amazing. Now i got to go unsubscribe you, so you're back to 999. Hold on. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. Actually, I think I'm I think I'm three of your 1,000 subscribers. I think I'm subscribed to you on my phone, on my TV, and on my main account here on my computer. So, but now drop down two away. No, no, that's not me. I didn't do it. That one coin collector. I promise. <laughs> I, I I'd be too afraid to do it right now because I'd be afraid the whole stream would drop and I'd lose it all just messing around. <laughs> but. Yeah, guys, I mean, I don't mind Jacob, for example. I you Definitely, I mean, you can give information on your channel, but you can't use the word subs in what you write. YouTube really doesn't like that. And if we keep using the word sub in chat, there's a chance that a lot of us are going to lose a lot of our uh, followers, especially any of the new people that signed up because YouTube doesn't like sub for sub channels and things like that. So Jacob Gonzalez has a lot of good stuff. He's a younger guy doing some good stuff, but... um. So yeah, make sure you follow him if you haven't either. But already, but but yeah, we can't use the word sub in uh in chat. Thanks for that, Lincoln. Appreciate that. Um, you didn't really drop down the nine ninety eight, did you? I, I swear it's not me messing with you. Maybe some other people are just having some fun with you. But and and I was gonna, you know, that's probably something that's gonna happen too. I mean, I don't know if you've given out your give. I saw you did a stream earlier that one coin collector giving away some stuff. But if yet. 
I, I, I would guess once you do your big giveaway with that many new people coming, some people are going to get mad, you know, that they didn't win and will, probably will unsubscribe you. Hopefully it's not too many people. I don't think it'll be very many, but I wouldn't get too worried about it. I mean, you got a lot of new new stuff there, but new, new followers, and most of them will stay with you. But I just remember when I did my 250 subscriber giveaway, which you happened to win, that uh, MS64 Morgan dollar, I went from like 250 up to 400 like right away just because, you know, you give away something cool, people all of a sudden want to subscribe to you. But I think after you won that one, I think I lost like 10 or 15 subs right after I announced it because of all the people that were crying that they didn't win, I think. so. But you end up getting way more than you lose, so <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that too much. And hopefully it doesn't, hopefully too many of them don't leave you. Pencil Comics was 1,000. <laughs> That's great. Well, congratulations, that one coin collector. You got it on my stream live. I'll take all the credit for it. Rob Fine's treasure didn't have too much to do with it, did he? It was all about Michael Kittle Rare Coins putting you over that top. That's the way I see it. That's what I, I don't know. I mean, other people might see it a different way. Like, yeah, sure, he might have gotten you from 500 up to 980. Sure, we could say that. But, I mean, what's the number that really counts? It's about getting that 1,000. So, I mean, who, who's really the hero here? So, anyway, congratulations, that one coin collector. Again, it has nothing to do with me or Rob or anybody else. It's all about yours. It's your channel. You did it. I mean, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, Sheldon, it happens. It's, un it's inevitable. I mean, people don't like look at the good thing that oh wow i'm trying to do a great thing i'm trying to give something away they're just all thinking about man i wish i could win that and then they're all upset that yeah look at i got it in writing right there that one coin collector i it was all you michael i, I mean i see it say ha ha there i don't know what that means but i see it says it was all you michael that's awesome that's great how you doing rich good to see you here glad you could stop in um <laughs> uh that's funny uh, let me see while well, I got you here. I don't think there's really anything else I can show you under screen. I showed you those. I showed you the three-leg buffalo that just came in the mail. I mean, I did a video of this the other day. I showed you guys the the Morgan Dollar Deep Mirror Proof Like with the PCGS, uh, the really scarce doily label, which they only used for a couple weeks in 1989. Um, it was supposed to be a security feature where it has that print in the background, so it would be harder to make copies of that based on 1989 technology but the the uh, story is is that as soon as some of the higher ups in the company saw that they were using this label they thought it was really ugly and they said quit using that so they only used it for a couple weeks in the in 1989 late 1989 so um, there are people that collect these just based on the labels themselves and i know that someone asked earlier if i had any rattler holders this holder here is actually a rattler holder that's surrounded by a separate piece of plastic. So this outer, they call it an outer stacking ring, it's actually a separate piece of plastic that if you drop this on the floor like at a show, that thing will shatter and crack right off. It's already got a crack and a big chip in it right here, so it's not in mint condition. But So these are pretty rare, and it's hard to find them in really nice condition. But even if you find the most common coin you can think of, like a 1960s Roosevelt dime that's just worth a few dollars, because it's in this holder, it would be worth $100 plus just because there's people that collect those holders. So, Victoria's got to go learn from the show. Hope to see. It. Thanks again for coming by, Victoria, and congratulations on winning. That's great. Awesome. Hector, good to see you. That's awesome. Sheldon has turned into giveaways and freebies at times. Yeah, it's unfortunate that that's what it takes to get a lot of uh, growth, but... I mean, the way I see it, and I'm like I said, you guys hopefully will see soon with uh, when I do the giveaway once I get up to around a thousand and get a bunch of channels involved, and hope that works. A lot of it is about just the giveaway, and I know I'm going to get a lot of new followers and everybody else's that are just there trying to win the big coins. But my whole thinking is is that I like to put out educational content and try to teach you all about stuff, and it's just so much more fun and rewarding for myself knowing that my videos are going out to a thousand people instead of a hundred people or you know and after this goes maybe if maybe i grow up to 1500 or maybe even up to 2000 people eventually it'll just be that much more of an incentive to keep putting out more contact knowing that potentially 2000 people are seeing it instead of 500 or vice versa even though i know you're right some of those people basically were just buying those subscriptions by giving stuff away but 
a lot of those people, you know, it, it, it's just that's what it takes sometimes to there's so many channels on YouTube and to get that attention and for them to find you and for them to actually click that subscribe button. Sometimes you got to give them a little bit of a push to do it. So, I mean, there are people that are just all about, yeah, let's just keep giving stuff away and that's all it is. And then they never put out any real content or do anything good with it. But do you think there'd be enough content for a video called most hated coins? I wonder if there's some seriously hated or controversial coins. Yeah, there's a lot of coins out there that people just don't like and a lot of a lot of coins that people like say, oh, that's the ugliest coin ever and stuff like that. So, I mean, there's, and a lot of them are the more modern commemoratives that people don't like. So there would be a, that might make a good video. I don't know if I would do that video, but I'm sure somebody could. Or maybe I would, I don't know. And I'm sure like, I mean, you just look at enough commemoratives. I mean, one that comes to mind, I just opened up my red book is right here the 1995 special olympics world games it's got a uni striver on it right there for the special olympics and the image they did of her a lot of people just say it's a horrible rendition and even though special olympics is a great cause and everything a lot of people call that one of the ugliest uh coins that the u.s has made so i mean whether that's right or wrong i mean who knows but that's one of them that a lot of people don't like that's for sure Give a great history lesson with the show. Thanks for that, Lincoln. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's what I don't really like too, Sheldon. And that's why a lot of, I try to have some fun in the giveaway. Sheldon says a lot of people just come in and say, hey, have you done the giveaway yet? Or they'll come into the middle of your stream and say, hey, did I win anything? Did I win? Did I win? And it's like, you know what? You know, <laughs> just, you know, come on. Pay attention or just or be a little bit more polite about it, I guess, is one way to say but. That's why I like to try to have a little more fun. Like when I do some of the giveaways, I say, oh, go ahead and add a comment to this video. But then like five minutes into that video, I'll say, oh, your comment must have this in it. Otherwise, it doesn't count. Or, you know, just to kind of screen out the people that are there just to get the free stuff and that they don't, don't care about your content. And so I think that's kind of fun to do. Or to try to make people think a little bit more about you know how to enter and just, instead of just making it totally random and that's why i like giving away things during live streams and then rolling the dungeons and dragons dice to try to pick the winner too because you do that at the end of a stream like this or you can even do it in the middle whenever and as long as that means you know that the people that have been with you watching and are paying enough attention to at least type in whatever i tell you to type in at that time so i think that's kind of fun Parker, I see Parker's telling me I'm awesome. Let me read that again. You're awesome, Michael. I like seeing that. And Rich Kelly is too, and so is everyone else. Those are, yeah, there's a lot of great people in this coin community, a lot of great channels. And hopefully, you know, me sitting here rambling for the extra half hour or whatever I've been doing, you've had time to maybe make, meet some new friends or find some new channels here with the people in the chat. I know everybody's got that one coin collector, and he's probably not even in chat anymore. He's too big for our britches anymore with that. 1,000 plus subs. He's probably out celebrating with some of the bigger channels, and we probably won't hear too much from that one coin collector anymore, but it was great to know him while we did, and it was great that he kind of hung out with us while he did, but maybe someday we'll be up there in his league, but now that he's got that 1K plus, but um, let's see. Exactly. Did I win? Ah, you didn't win that one. And Lincoln, every time you win something, I send it off to Coins for Amateurs anyway. So I do got a package going out to them with those uh, Indian cents finally. I picked, found some other stuff to to send them. And I'm going to try to get uh, some of these um, A&A memberships for young collectors as part of their uh, the packages they give to young collectors each month. So that'll be fun. What would Sheldon say there? To come in and ask, wins the giveaway? They say, oh, I'll be right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That happens sometimes, Sheldon. And, you know, you can't avoid that. And the thing that's really more concerning is when people give away really big stuff. Like, I know there's one channel they're giving away a one kilo bar of silver coming up soon, which is, you know, 32 plus ounces of silver. So that's worth, you know, five, six hundred dollars. So it's like, I think they have like two or three thousand people already commented in the comment video. And, you know, when you start giving away stuff like that, not only it does bring a lot of people to you, but then all of a sudden you get a lot of people making fake accounts too. So that's always a concern. So um, hopefully that doesn't happen too much in the upcoming thing, you know, we're planning here. But it's hard to keep people from signing up under a fake account. But if, you, if they get caught, they're definitely not going to be a winner. 
<laughs> the moment you say get ready for a giveaway, boom, everybody says. And I don't know how it happened, Sheldon, because I was kind of watching out of the corner of my eye this whole stream while I'm rambling on about uh, commemorative coins. We had, you know, 30-some people watching. But as soon as we get to the end of the giveaway, the number jumped up into the 40s or something. So I don't know if they just knew to listen or knew that there was a giveaway coming. I don't know. Or maybe that was just me not watching the viewer count right. But it seems like always when I watch back the live streams, the number of viewers is always the highest right at the giveaway moment. So I don't know how that works. I haven't figured that out yet. So. All right. What else we got here? Go, love it going to CFA. Yeah, CFA is great. They do a lot of good stuff for sure. And not only do they just do great for the community, they put out a lot of good videos too. It's not just all about, I mean, you, we've all seen it. A lot of those channels, the bigger channels, all their, it's just all clickbait stuff like, oh, this coin's worth $9,000. Check out this. And there's a big red arrow pointing to something or whatever it is. Or do you have $1,000 in your pocket and all this. And a lot of this is just garbage clickbait. And then they'll show you some heritage auction or some error coin that maybe one of those things did go for a thousand dollars once but nobody's ever going to have that in their change no one's ever going to find it but yeah coins for amateurs is one of the good guys they do a lot of real content on real things that matter to not only just the average beginning collector but even the more advanced collectors too a lot of really great information and they're not doing it just to get clicks and views they're doing it because you can tell that they care about the hobby fake accounts is the trouble with youtube yeah, Lincoln, but you know what? If any of you out there with fake accounts wants to turn on all my uh, older live streams and just hit play and subscribe to me, I'm not going to say no. But, yeah, it, it's it's a shame when people try to take advantage of someone trying to do something nice, uh, like by doing a giveaway and just try to get those extra one or two or ten extra chances. And, you know, not only are they cheating others, but it's just it's just not right. So. That one coin collector, guys, I'm only 9K away from 10K. Look at that. You want me to keep the stream going until you get 10K? Is that what we're going to do, uh, that one coin collector? I mean, I'm glad you're still slumming down here with me being under 1,000 uh, thousand subs, you know. But, so I'm glad you're still at least hanging in my stream for the time being. So, <laughs> uh, What else do we got here? Quit begging so you can re-click you. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> CFA's clean, family friendly. Yeah, exactly. No, they do they're good. And I just like their uh, their coin roll searching that they do, where they get everybody to guess for the points, and they make it kind of fun. And they always got their dog Lucy up on under the camera at the end. And I don't know. I mean, they might I might hear hear about it from some of them, but I don't know if I don't know about the little quail Abe or whatever. I don't. I'm not much of a bird person, and I mean dogs are fine. I don't I don't mind the dog, but I don't know. I keep seeing that uh, quail, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger, and I'm just wondering when it's going to become dinner. That's what I keep thinking. <laughs> I know that's not very nice, but... <laughs> oh, let's see. That one coin collector sent me... Oh, Talk, did you do a raid for me? Of that one coin collector raid? Did we win anything? <laughs> That'd be really cool. Let's see, Parker... Anyway, I mean, I think it's getting kind of late for everybody. I don't want to keep you guys all just rambling on and on about a bunch of nothing. Um, I guess one thing I'll show real quick, because I did did see it out of the corner of my eye, is one more thing that maybe you guys haven't seen before. Is I bought some of these recently. These are German Not Guild coins. And I'll eventually do some separate videos on these. Uh, yeah, it tastes like chicken. I'm, Sure. You know, the quail eggs, I mean, I guess they eat those, too. Those are kind of good. But um, So German Notgeld, right after World War I, um, Germany had hyperinflation in their money. So in 1921, you'd have a coin about this size that would be worth one mark in Germany. And then by 1922, this is the 1922 coin, this was already worth 500 marks. So the same size coin went from one up to 500. And then by the end of 1923... You had coins this size that were 50 million marks. And there was even one that was a little larger that was a billion marks. So, I mean, these are just some of the nice um, uh, German not geld coins. And not geld means not money. So the German government itself wasn't making this. Just local areas of Germany, like this, different states and different cities made their own money at the time. So here's one of the 100 mark pieces. Real high grade MS67. And it's a uh, bronze that's been gilt. And here's another one. Here's one 500 mark. That's an MS67, real nice. 
Got a real cool horse on the back. This is these are all. This one's 1922. Here's a 1923 aluminum piece from the same area. MS65. Pretty cool piece. But a lot of these. I mean, what if you find these in circulated condition? Um, you can find them for just a few dollars or so, but in real high grades like these, yeah, they go for you know some usually a hundred dollars or more. But just fun, just another fun thing to start collecting or start looking into. So uh, let's see, Liz Ann Fines, what are we asking here? You subbed me a little while. I appreciate that, Liz. Yeah, we had the uh, the mods had to block that because YouTube doesn't like us using the word subbed or subbed or subscription in chats, and they can eventually take a lot of those uh subscriptions away from us um but yeah anybody that subscribed me in the last you know I, I always go back and check their channels and as long as it's coin related or mostly coin related i definitely subscribe them right back now i'll admit if you subscribe me and all your channel is is a bunch of videos about you know doing makeup five times a day posting videos or a whole bunch of cooking that's i mean if you post videos maybe once a month yeah i'll subscribe you because it's not going to fill up my subscription wall but if it's some channel that posts a bunch of videos of something that I'm not interested in and you're posting stuff every day, there's a good chance I'm probably not going to subscribe back just because I can't have my subscriptions because I already miss a lot of other people's coin videos because I'm subscribed to probably four or 500 other channels. And I'd like to, you know, be able to see those other coin related videos. So I can't be subscribing to everyone that's not coin related. But I'll definitely check out everybody's channel that has subscribed to me tonight. That's for sure. So. As, again, as long as you're coin related, I mean, my, especially if you don't have too many videos or you don't have content at all, I'll, I'll click the button anyway. Sure, that's fun. Let's get my kill. Okay, yeah, Lincoln, I appreciate that. And you know what? I mean, everybody makes a big deal about the one thousand number because that's when YouTube, you know, starts getting you monetized again. But I'm not too worried about that because a, I mean, I don't have anywhere near the watch time required. Which I mean, that's one reason I'm kind of rambling on here is the we're getting a little bit more watch time too. But um. Even then, I know once it's monetized, it's not even really that much money to worry about. It's, it'll be a few dollars, maybe 10 bucks a month, maybe 20 if I get some a lot more. So it's not a lot of money, nothing to worry about. So, But it is kind of fun once you get up there to at least know that you're getting a few few dollars spending money for, for your efforts. But, yeah, I'm not too worried about that. But, yeah, it, it's nice. Just Like I said, I'm more about I'd – I like getting the number of subscribers to grow mostly just so I know – um, more people have, are potentially looking at the content and putting out. You know, it's not really about the monetization or any of that. Uh, ninety-nine billion. Okay, I don't know what that is. <laughs> don't wear makeup. Confrontational, non-conform. Okay, I'll check that out. Uh, you can go to the advanced settings and make it to where the S word can't be used. Yeah, that one coin color. I've seen that where you can block certain words, and I thought about that, but you know what? If someone comes in here and says it a couple times. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind the mods blocking it out afterwards, but it's nice. I mean, I don't want it totally blocked, I guess. I mean, you know, worst case, if YouTube does come in and, I mean, I think we're still a small enough channel, at least I am here, small. I can't imagine they're too worried about anything we're doing here, but I don't want to be openly violating any of their rules or be questioned about that, but I don't want to get too crazy and, you know, get too... Uh, too crazy about blocking people post and stuff too if someone wants to tell me they subbed me i mean that's that should be a good thing and i should be you know saying thank you and thank you but yeah i prefer if they used a different word than subbed but that's great how much watch time do i need i i think i'm up only about a quarter i think you need four thousand hours and i think i got somewhere right around a thousand so i mean i know i, if I start doing more of the live streams where i open up lincoln sense do maybe do that once a week or do some more of those uh 5,000 wheat scent bags. I think I got the coin shop going to give me another one of those pretty soon. If I do more bag breaks like that, and I mean, I can get to the watch time eventually, but it's just the only way to really get there. I mean, if you look at my videos, most of my videos are 30 to 45 seconds each just showing off a coin like this under the camera, flipping it over and showing it, and that's my whole video, and there's no way you can get to 4,000 hours doing 30-second videos, so that's why I'm not even close. Um... But yeah, if I start doing more live streams, which I have a, I, I plan to do it. I like doing it. And mostly, I, I mean, yeah, my live stream is sitting there watching me open a box of Lincoln cents from the bank and finding six to 12 wheat cents. I know is not that interesting content for all of you, but I think it's more about just talking to y'all and 
you know, questions and answers back and forth. I think that's more of it. And, and if I can sit there and open up some coins and we can look at that while we're doing it, that's fine. Um, we'd probably have just as much fun if I wasn't even opening up rolls and we were just chatting like we're kind of doing right now. And anyway, but nice sticker. I appreciate that, Lizanne. Like I said, if anybody else has stickers and you want a sticker, I mean, I'll do sticker trades with you guys. My address is in the description of all my videos, or at least all the recent ones. Um, go ahead and send me some mail and... Yeah, I'll mail you a sticker back, and that's fun. Code word support. Yeah, saying supporters is better than saying subscriber. A lot of people say, oh, let's be friends. Or, or really, you don't even have to do that. If you do it right, like if you go to most people's channels, subscribe to them, and leave a comment on their video, most people know enough to say, well, I let's go check that person out and do the same back for them. Not every channel will do it, but if you just go to 10 random coin channels right now that you're not subscribed to, and you leave a comment saying, wow, I'm glad I found you guys, um, great video, keep up the great work, or something, just leave a nice comment. I bet you six or seven of those ten channels will subscribe you back within 48 hours. That's just, I mean, that's just the way this community is. So you don't even really have to say you did it or ask for it. You just, you just do it. Where did I have those made? It's a company called Sticker Mule, stickermule.com. Um, it's great. I mean, it's the, they do really good quality work. I recommend, I mean, I haven't tested too many other companies, but that's the one I used. If you want to try them out, you can get 10 stickers ordered up for nine bucks, and that includes the shipping. You might have to pay a little bit of tax, and really when you order the 10, they'll send you 15 or 16 of them anyway, so you'll get some extras, um, and it's a good way to try them out. You, you just upload your art. Like, I didn't make this the way, I just had like a, a square, you know, JPEG image that said, you know, the coin and all that. And they did all the cutting, and they made it into a circle for me, and they do all that work. So it was pretty cool. And if, like I said, I have a link that they send me. If you need, if you're gonna put in an order more than just that ten stickers for nine bucks, uh, where if you use the link that I could give you, uh, you save ten dollars on your order. So I mean, if you're interested in that, um, send me an email, and I can forward you that link. Um, email is Mike at Kittlecoins.com. My email is in the description of all my videos on my about page and all that. So. If I could help you out with that. Yep, Sticker Mule. You got it right there, Lizanne Fine. I supported your channel, David. That's great. Uh, what else do we got? Sloan, we only have 392. <laughs> hey, look, I mean, believe me, we were all we were all there at one point. I was, I was at 392 not very long ago. I did my 250 subscriber giveaway. I think it was in end of May or early June or so. And then I did 500 like a month later, and now I'm getting... Then I did 750, and it's like each time I've done one of those giveaways, and part of it's because, yeah, I give away a little more than some people do in their giveaways, but each one of those giveaways, I've, I've you know got an extra 100, 150 subscribers out of it. And one trick that I did on those, which a lot of people will do a big giveaway for their 400 subscribers or 500 subscribers, and they'll, they'll do an announcement of it, and then they'll give the thing away the next day, and then it's over. Well, that's not the way I did it. You know, if you see how I do it, I'll do the announcement of the giveaway, and but I won't actually do the giveaway for another week or two. So I give people a whole week and a half, two weeks to enter. So not only am I getting subscribers all that first day to get into the giveaway, it's going all week long. More, more and more people are finding out about it and getting into it. So it's like a whole week or two long event. And I like to do that because not everybody comes on YouTube every single day like some of us. Some people only check once a week or so. So, I mean, it gives a lot of people an opportunity to get in. And then all during that week you have your event, you can be in other streams or people you're friendly with that aren't going to get upset when you do it. You could say, hey, by the way, if you don't mind checking out my giveaway, and you know, check it out. And, you know, things like that. So, I mean, you got a whole week to do promotion of your event. Other than the people, and if you, but if you're one of the people that just says, Oh, I'm doing my 500 giveaway, and then you actually give the thing away that night or the next day. You're not giving people enough time to even fit, find out. I'm here for knowledge. I have 10 supporters, I think. Ha, ha, ha. No need to support me. You know what, Amanda? I don't even know if I'm one of your subscribers. I don't know. I might not be. <laughs> but then again, you don't have any content, or, I mean, or if you don't have too, any videos posted, then it doesn't really matter anyway. No, I just looked. I'm not one of your subscribers. That's funny. But I am now. I think I'm number 11. <laughs> but that's funny. Oh, Lincoln just got you too, Amanda. 
You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have to do a twenty five subscriber giveaway pretty soon, Amanda. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. All right, what else do we got? I need to go watch that latest video. <laughs> got twenty eight. Yeah, like I said, confrontational nonconformists. A lot of people, when you subscribe to them, it's just like an automatic thing. They'll go check you out and just click subscribe right back just to kind of return the favor, whether you have content or not. And I think that's cool to do. Like if, if I see channels that follow me and support me and they don't have content, I'll click subscribe anyway. A, because I know I'm not going to get any notifications from them anyway, most likely. So, And they're not going to have a bunch of stuff cluttering up my subscription wall. And But then again, if they ever decide to start doing content a month from now, a year from now, whenever, they already got a head start now because getting that first 100 subscribers, as we all know, that's done it is not easy. Um, and then getting the next 100 is not easy either. And getting up, you know, it, it, the next milestone gets easier and easier, it seems like. At least that's my experience. But yeah, that first 50 and then that first 100 and the first 200, those are tough. Um, you like what Silver Nitrate did with his? Yeah, that was pretty wild, Young. And, then, and then that really did re go back and reward the people that were following him from the start the most, for sure. I mean, that's one thing, though, in, in a lot of the giveaways where people say, oh, you have to be a subscriber to win. I mean, technically, that's against YouTube rules, I believe. Um, but I think everybody pretty much does it because it's kind of, especially when you do something bigger and you don't want just some random person... I mean, chances are it could just be some random person you'd ever heard of win anyway, but it'd be a real shame if that person doesn't even take the time to subscribe to you and then you end up having to give them something cool. But the least they can do is subscribe to your channel. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, I think in a lot of the giveaways I do, I, I kind of dance around it. I don't say you have to be a subscriber, but I guess it's strongly implied that you should be, especially if you want to find out if you win. You're going to need to subscribe to, you know, find out the announcement later, so... Kind of like when David at 800 sub posted a video and got a bunch of views. Um, if you like supporting and you like coins, channel is not about streaming videos, it's about supporting other. Yeah, Lincoln, you, I see, you, you definitely do a lot of help, not only for me and my channel, but so many channels in the community. And But I'm sure if you've ever put out some more content or did something, I'm sure we'd all be right there to have your back too. So it goes both ways. I mean, I, like I say, I support some other channels too. I do. Some channels have asked me to be moderators on their channel to help out while I'm there. And, hey, while I'm there, if I can help them out and they've helped me, then more power to – more power. You know, I mean, I'm all for it. All right. Gonna t hopefully you'll still be going. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to still be going. I'm starting to wear out here. Um, and I know the quality of the chat's going to be decreasing and decreasing the longer we go. I know that happens. You get some diminishing returns there for sure. How – Wow, those are beautiful. Yeah, the, these German Notgeld pieces are pretty crazy. And these came up in an auction not too long ago. And I just had to buy them because I know they're all like real high grades. And um, this one in particular, the 500 mark piece, I really wanted it because I think there's only two or three in this grade. And I've had them in other grades before, like MS-65 or MS-66. And it just so happens in this auction there were two of them in MS-67. And... You know, I wanted them enough. I had to put my bids in. They were going to be an auction like 10 seconds apart from each other. So I knew I couldn't just watch them and bid on them separately. I had to just put my bids in on each, and I ended up winning them both. So now I got two of them that are tied for highest grading. But anyway, it's, that's sometimes what how it happens in the auction. Oh, well, these and goodies is here. Al, that's great. Um, all right, I guess if anybody else doesn't have any other questions about the program we did earlier on commemoratives or on any of these coins that I just showed you here real quick, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and end it. We've been going two, two and a half hours probably, and uh, that's long enough. Again, the coin seminar weekend is not over. There's a chance you can um, see a couple more programs tomorrow. The link to the rest of the schedule is in the... Um, is in the description to, to my video here, so check that out. Um, do I cherry pick online at eBay? Yeah, some, sometimes. There's a few varieties and different things I look for. Um, yeah, you don't go for the biggest ones that are out there. Like You don't look for those varieties that, oh, yeah, it's going to automatically be a $10,000 coin because chances are there's 100 other people looking for that same thing, and the chances of you finding one are real low because for it to be valued that much, it's got to be pretty rare in the first place. But 
yeah, there's a few varieties that I know I can spot based on, you know, halfway good photos that not many other people are looking at that I know if I buy it for a hundred bucks, I can sell it for two or three hundred bucks. So there's a few different things I look for to that. I might run my searches once every few days, maybe once every couple weeks for some of them. But yeah, I do that sometimes. And, you know, I'm sure some people do that to my listings too. I mean, not everybody knows everything about every kind of coin. So everybody's, it's possible to be a uh, cherry picked. Lincoln, thanks again for coming by. Um, oh, you can, you can stay up later. I thought you said you can't stay. But, yeah, no, I appreciate that. No school tomorrow. Stay up. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, i got to be at a coin show tomorrow in Van Nuys. I wasn't supposed to be setting up at, so i got dealer set up starting tomorrow, 8 a.m. for that. Show's in Van Nuys. Um, so, yeah, if any of you are in Southern California and want to stop by the coin show tomorrow, Van Nuys Masonic Lodge, I'll be there with a table. Um but yeah, once again, there's more Coin Seminar Weekend coming up. Check out the link for that in the description. Again, once Coin Seminar Weekend is over, I'll post the, link, the information here again. You're able to vote for your favorite stream. You get one vote per person, and you send your email to that email address. And the winner of that is will get a one-ounce silver round, apparently. So again, just as a for instance, just as a hypothetical, I'm not telling you to do this. I wouldn't tell you just to vote for me. But just as a hypothetical, if you did send a vote to that email saying Michael Kittle's stream was the best, apparently I might get a silver one ounce round. So just saying that'd be, that'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? But I'm not telling you to vote for me. I would not tell you to vote for me. Um, thanks again, Lincoln. Thanks again, Sheldon, Jeff, Al, Amanda Kittle, everybody. Congratulations again to that one coin collector. I knew I had the power and the ability to push you over the edge and get you those 1,000 subscribers you deserved. Um, congratulations to you. You are welcome. You don't have to thank me again. I know you owe me big. I put you over that 1,000 mark. You don't have to say it anymore. Let's just leave it. Let's just not talk about it anymore. Um, I did it. It's you know we, we know that. Everybody here knows that. Congratulations to you. Awesome. Sheldon, I appreciate that too. <laughs> um, but again, uh, we'll see you at the rest. I'll try to be in, in, in the streams and the rest of the coin seminars that are coming up uh, tomorrow. And uh, I'll try live streaming more too because it's fun. So again, sent my vote in for you already. There you go, that one coin collector. I appreciate it. So with that, have a great night, everybody. Um, those of you that are interested in a and memberships that we talked about, make sure you've emailed me. Those of you that need help getting red books, also email me and I'll try to help you with that the best I can. And again, and as always, if you have any questions about coins or any of that stuff, shoot me an email. The worst I'll say back is I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I'll try not to be too mean, but, but maybe I'll be able to help you. I don't know. <laughs> so again, thanks for supporting me always, and uh, we'll see you at the next one. And um, there goes my phone again. Um, anyway, have fun with your collections, and thanks again for all the support. And we will see you. Thanks again. Goodbye.